On this week's episode of Friend Code, we're talking about the recent Animal Crossing Direct and the Fire Emblem Three Houses DLC, Cindered Shadows. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Friend Code. I'm your host, Michael Damiani. This week, I'm joined by Brandon Jones. Yeah! And a very special guest, Rogers Base. Thank How's you it for going? Having me. Always a pleasure to be here. I always like joining you guys. This is like the third or fourth time I've done this now, too. So it's cool. It's like I get all these new subscribers every time, and they're like, "We came from the Easy Allies." And I'm like, yeah. well, "That's great. I'll keep very doing nice. more of them." <laughs> uh, for those maybe aren't familiar with you, uh, what, what, give them a little insight into what you're about. Sure, I do uh, live reactions for anime and manga, and of course, video games, primarily Nintendo, which is, I think, why I'm here. So. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm. I, it was funny because I originally, we were talking about this a little bit before. I originally scheduled this for Tuesday this week. We're right. recording on Thursday this week. And uh, after confirming Tuesday, I asked Roger, can we move it to Thursday? Yep. And <laughs> you told me you thought maybe we might have known something. Right. But like from my perspective, <laughs> I get this message. I, I just forgotten about the direct. And I get a reminder from you saying, yeah. hey, we're definitely talking about like Animal Crossing. <laughs> right, and right, I'm right, like, right, oh, right. yeah, we totally are, <laughs> yeah. aren't we? Well, because this morning I, I woke up. And then I was like, okay, well, now that we have the direct, and I'm here anyway, it's like, we need to discuss it. There's so much stuff in this Animal There's Crossing. There's a lot of stuff, direct, yeah. It's like, 27 minutes. Oh, my God. 27 minutes of pure, unbridled joy. It was. Is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, this is something I'm going to defer to the two of you, because we okay. have Brandon Jones, who's the resident Easy Allies Animal Crossing enthusiast, I would say. You you and like... And take, old, it, taking that title from Ben Moore is, is a lot. And Bloodworth. Bloodworth is just like, like... Old school is Bloodworth, crazy. I feel like, but like new school... Ben's got more merch than I do. Ben reps Animal oh, Crossing a lot okay. more than I do. Okay. Yeah, got to admit. He's got two killer Animal Crossing shirts that I covet. And obviously, I should have worn my Animal Crossing shirt. I didn't even think oof. about that. I'm wearing a Hunter Hunter shirt. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. And obviously, like, if it wasn't clear before, the enthusiasm that came through that, like, that yeah, DM man. from Roger about Animal Crossing, like, okay, we got two <laughs> really enthusiastic yeah. people about this. So, yeah, how did you feel about this Animal Crossing Focus Direct? I mean, I think the, the first thing was going into this. I feel like there were so many things that I was questioning just because like they didn't reveal anything. It's been a, like we're a month away from the game coming out. Mm. We didn't see patterns. Mm. We didn't see holidays. We didn't see like a lot of basic classes. Like we didn't see dogs. We didn't see cats. We didn't see <laughs> hamsters. I'm like, how are we a month away and we haven't seen dog, cats, and hamsters? Like that's crazy. So that was my big thing going into it. I'm like, I need to make sure that Clay the hamster's in the game. Yeah. He's my best friend. I need to make sure that the holidays are still in there, which they are, and I like the way they're implementing it. I'm sure we'll talk about it. Yeah. And uh, and then overall, I was just like, I want to see what else they're gonna bring to the table that's new. And I certainly did not expect terraforming. I mean, that's like, yeah, completely blew my breath away. So I was over the moon once. I saw everything revealed so yeah there was just a very matter of factness to terraforming as well it's just kind yeah. of like how you would expect that to work I don't know how I would kind of break that down to try to figure out how you could add that to Animal Crossing but then just having it be as simple as like you understand this dynamic of like digging you know you make a yeah. hole you fill a hole it's like you make a, a gap in the environment you fill that gap if you want to um, but it's it was <laughs> it's just so funny to me, and I love like you know having a, a, an Animal Crossing enthusiast because like oh, yeah. I am so excited about this franchise, but at the same time it's funny to have like 27 minutes full of video, and I'm just like ah you know that somebody can literally like take a shovel and just fill in some dirt on the edge of a river, and I'm like ah you know <laughs> it doesn't take much. I think it's because we've had this series the same for so long. Yeah, like like we know okay you need to make a bridge if there's a river there, like there's yeah. no other way to go around. You have to do this thing like the town is just built out that way and sometimes yeah. you're going to get the bad luck of the draw where you have cliffs yeah. on either side and so you get used to, to your map that. yeah and yeah. now it's like no yeah. man your map is there to be dominated yeah Ugh. yeah and it's almost like especially with the stuff they show with furniture and mm -hmm. like with the detail how you could change the color but also change the patterns it seems like on one end of the spectrum they're making things a lot more complicated in a good way but on the other side of the spectrum, it's like stuff that was complicated before, like needlessly complicated, it's all been streamlined. Yeah. Whether it's like storage stuff or, you know, the management of your town, anything like that. So I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm truly blown away. I don't know what I was expecting. I think I was expecting maybe like New Leaf 2.0. Just because New Leaf was so good. Like, how many hours did you put in New Leaf? A lot. I think I, I did nothing beat the initial GameCube for, like, the hours that I put in. Mm. But, yeah, I put in a ton. And I was telling the guys before when I saw, uh, the fr like, 30 seconds into the very first Switch video we ever oh. saw, I was like, Animal Crossing. Like, I just <laughs> yeah. immediately, I was like, okay, it looks like that. And then, like, when I felt it, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. It's just, it's coming, and it's just such a perfect idea. Yeah. And seeing it that wide, seeing it... Mm. Um, 
looking pretty good. Like oh. blood actually was pointing out a lot of times when like shadows were like, ooh, look at that. Like that hardwood looks uh, pristine. <laughs> like, it was so, the moment they let the uh, lantern in the the, the tent. Yeah. He oh, was yeah. just pointing out the lighting effect oh, in yeah, there. Yeah. It's like subtle things like Visually, that. Visually, I really am pleased. Again, it's, you know, yeah. you, you, you can't, this is not a game you're going to run comparisons really on anything graphically. No. Even something like in-house like Luigi's Mansion 3, which like really just visually is such a showpiece. Sure. Um, you know, more for design than necessarily for, necessarily for technology, but like it, does look better. Oh, and I, I, mean, am, I, and I am stoked. Yeah. Yeah, like the insect that area big aquarium. Where you set the fountain and then yeah. all the butterflies are flying around you. It's it's gorgeous. Just even get a little shininess just on the yeah. on the carapace of the yeah. bug when he, he picked it up. But the one thing that I'm I'm kind of curious about where I wonder because one of the things for me, uh, I'm just so you know something about me. Sure. I don't mind grinding. Like I, I don't mind putting more time into something if it does have a if it is gonna pay off at the end of the road or if it does have a nice sure. like in the case of Animal Crossing, such a fantastic visual um, payoff. And a lot of that stuff takes time, you know, like yeah. you, especially when you first start out that first uh, easy live in like our beach house stream, we played a little bit of Animal Crossing and I was like reminded like, oh yeah, there's not much I can do yeah. actually to fill this hour <laughs> right when you jump into the game. You're supposed to be like, okay, see you again tomorrow. And, you know, he was just ripping through that environment. Just like, I'm going to put a road here. I'm going to do, you know, knock out this wall. Wonder like what... Uh, the cost is if I'm gonna like put in a road or like mm. literally just like I'm not even gonna put a bridge here I'm just gonna like block this yeah. river out like am I spending resources there can I just go nuts in one day or is that really kind of uh, are there limitations there I wouldn't mind so that actually you know when you do these big renovations you can really give yourself the time to plan them out and they do take like a week or two so that when you're done and you look at that cliff and that cliff's not there anymore like that wasn't something I just like you know, bulldozed in a matter of five no. minutes. Like that kind of took some time yeah. to make happen. What I was going to say was that the terraforming stuff and the waterscaping stuff, not a lot of people have picked up on this from the trailers, but you can actually clearly see that it does take a grind to get it. Because to get waterscaping, you need the silver shovel and the golden uh. shovel is the cliff one. And if you just look really closely, you can see the differences between the inventory. Sure. And the only reason I even know that is because <laughs> I just did three other Animal Crossing discussions this morning uh. and everybody pointed <laughs> it out to me. And, uh, and so I think that's actually kind of cool. Is it better? Yeah. If it's your grind, but the other thing that I was just like, bless, I'm so happy they did this, are those the little nook mile achievement thingies. Uh -huh. Where every day it's like when you pick your fruit or when you fish for things, now obviously you're going to get bells when you sell it in the store, but now you have like these little extra stamps that you can get nook miles to yeah. so then go to the other deserted islands to build out everything. It's, it, it is, it's gamifying the system in a way that really wasn't there before, and it makes it even more exciting. So yeah. I love it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to put stuff like that. Anything that like relies like on like the quote unquote like the dailies or whatever, sure. like something to bring you back to keep coming in and stuff. Because I think that's where more the average player's mindset comes from. Is that oh, I play it for a few hours or, or a week or whatever, I get it, but what keeps me coming back? Sure. And I mean, at least I thought they were doing like a good showing a good indication. Of, like we we have some ways to solve that issue besides like having these things that you just talked about also like they talk about like the free DLC updates with all the events they've oh, obviously yeah. done seasonal events but yeah. it seems like they might go a little bit harder in on this time mm -hmm. to keep people coming back even if it sounds like they're gonna be okay this is a game where they're okay with mm -hmm. you walking away for, for a little, yes. little bit but they want you to come back they want it, you to remember it come back remember that magic and like experience some new things in there and as long as they keep that slow trickle of updates I think they'll nail, nail it on that yeah. Yeah. and that's not you know that what well, that system wouldn't be strange to somebody who's played a lot of Animal Crossing because it's like that is a pivotal moment when you finally do get all the fruit. Yeah. When you finally do, yeah, obviously you're Fill you're up your museum, you're, you're taking off all the bugs totally. and you're taking off all of the the fossils and everything. So just totally. having small like little beats of that. And for me, for something like Animal Crossing, like I really get in a comfortable groove. I can find myself actually not. You know, because there's two sides to it. One side is I, you know, uh, pop open the game. I've done all my, you know, th like things I wanted to do today. And then I might look on that list and be like, okay, are there any things I can check off? Do I want to go to an island and see if I can just get more, you know, hardwood or something like that, like yeah. that I yeah. can get that one uh, miles? Or on the opposite end of it, I'm just goofing off and doing something, and then like, yeah. oh, cool, I finally got enough to build that thing. And they're like, oh, by the way, you also finished this these miles. Yeah. Like, oh, neat, I didn't even know, I didn't even yep. realize I was working toward that. That's, yeah. yeah. And like, Having that's a nice little work thing. Towards, like, I think it's such thanks, a key I appreciate thing. that. Because yeah. yeah. it gives you a little bit more of an objective and purpose, on, like, yeah. an extra layer of that in Animal Crossing, which I think is going to help it so much. Yeah, especially, I think, for the casual player who, like you said, maybe hasn't been into it forever. Like, my yeah. girlfriend, for example, has always like liked the aesthetic of Animal Crossing, but has never really wanted to get into it. And I like, am basically forcing her to play this game with me. Because the only other play person who plays like, sure in my close family is my mom she, and she like loves animal crossing wow nice. and so i want my mom and my <laughs> girlfriend to play together in animal crossing settle every difference that they have and it'll be good to go <laughs> 
Oh, man. Uh, w- sorry. Uh, we have some questions from our patrons. I know we have a lot to talk about with Animal Crossing. Um, our patrons had a, a questions about certain things that came up in the direct. I think the most fun one and the easiest one to begin with comes from Reagan. Uh, so they want to know, is there anything left after everything you saw in this direct mm-hmm. and you've seen before? Is there anything left that they could add to make the game better? Because to them, this is starting to feel like an Animal Crossing Ultimate situation. Love That's kind of like that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Switch kind of feels like that. I feel like yeah. so many of their franchises, they've brought yeah. it back in such a strong way yeah. um, where they, they they really looked at the whole thing and analyzed this why like Prime 4 is so fascinating to me it's like what are they going to do is this oh going to be God. a big spin or and I was a little nervous when I saw camping I was like okay we're on this island is this going to be like super small oh, this sure. thing looks huge oh, it's, yeah, I was saying eight people potentially yeah. living on that island like yeah. this is going to be a big plot of land and so it's nice to see like no we really fundamentally want to look at what do we need to add regardless of whether you're going to be like in the mountains or on an island or on a farm or whatever like whatever the twist is going to be or the theme that we're still thinking how can we streamline the process mm-hmm. how can we the radial menu and how like I just ease of use things or potentially something that just visibly you can see a character do in an Animal Crossing gameplay video and go oh, wait what did he just do yeah. you know stuff like that and there was a lot of it you know like oh, I, yeah. I felt this whole video was crammed full of that stuff yeah, so I don't know in terms of like new stuff that they could add I, like more Nintendo crossover stuff honestly like I'm always a huge fan of that oh, like, when Sure, yeah. Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And I would love more of that, but also like if we don't get it, I'm also kind of okay with it. Yeah. Just because of everything we've seen. Like even the the basic furniture sets, like the cabin furniture set or the yeah. Zen furniture set or whatever, they're getting a rehaul. Yeah. Like you could see in this trailer, like the little I think it's the exotic room or the Zen room or whatever, where she's sitting and having this giant Chinese feast. I'm like, this looks incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never been able to do this in Animal Crossing and make it look this nice. Yeah. So yeah, on one hand it's like I, I would like more of the Nintendo-centric stuff, but on the other side, I'm like, if they're going to revamp literally every furniture set, which is what I've kind of wanted for a long time, I'm good with it. But right now, like you just said, we're kind of in like the golden age of Nintendo, right? We're getting like Breath of the Wild, Fire Emblem Three Houses, yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, like all these really big franchises and all of Nintendo's other ones. Like, yeah, I would love to see the Monado as like something that I could put in my house. I would love to see like <laughs> the three relics of the kids from uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Like, that would be awesome too. But mm. I don't really know how far along they're, you know, they're thinking of in terms of like adding new Nintendo content to the game, whether yeah. that's part of like free updates and DLC or whether that's going to come with holidays or I'm not really sure. Yeah, I know it's become kind of a staple of it, but also to me, from my perspective, it always felt like it was something they needed to help distinguish the series. Like sure. early in the earlier days, sure. like let's lean a little more heavy on like, hey, the crossover stuff. Sure. Catch the eyeballs and stuff. Oh, what is this? Oh, there's like the Master Sword and a pedestal. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. And now it's like it can stand on its own too. Like yeah. it's like it doesn't. As you said, it wouldn't be the end, worst thing in the world if they don't have a lot of that or if no. any more than you know than what you would expect. No. I would. I do want them to bring back though. There was something in New Leaf, the Welcome Amiibo thing, where you can use like your Link Amiibo and then you'll get like Ganon in the game or like you oh, pull yeah. it, it was like Pig Ganon. Yeah. I would love, love, the, love like to the, see that come back. Like, the, like it's Villagers or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was through Wisp. And the character yeah. sprite yeah. is a poster or something. Yeah. 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 Some kind of little yeah. art detail. They, already, they confirmed that Amiibo support is coming to the game and like all the Amiibo cards work. So that, I saw that and like I said, Clay the Hamster, I've been waiting day one. I already have the Amiibo card ready to go. It's my best friend. <laughs> but beyond that, in the trailer, they showed like oh DJ KK you can't use him yet so that has to come through a free update too I'm assuming like because yeah. they pointed it out in the trailer if it wasn't something that was like highlighted in there where it's like oh you just can't use him yet that says to me there's something else later down the line yeah uh, for me the big thing is communication I was kind of hoping to see like a lot of interesting things because there's a lot of weird walls set up between players where it's just like I have to like go into your game and physically like hand you sure. an item and it's like ah, it'd be great if I could just send you that yeah. and they do have the app functionality uh, the app I could see actually something that they add functionality to yeah. like, like th- those two things can develop separately which yeah. is nice um, and the stuff that they have set up I think is interesting but uh, I just see myself I love you know whether it's like Animal Crossing or Assassin's Creed or whatever I just love getting like dumb little <laughs> items very just like strange. I love Animal t- Crossing or Assassin's Creed you know we're just like we well, just run around and gather <laughs> dumb stuff yeah. these are two games where you run around yeah. and gather dumb stuff yeah. you know yeah. and uh, I loved when they had like the uh, islands where you just go to and just these poor islands that just like deforestation yeah. you just go just <laughs> chop down every tree like there's some cow that's there it's like I, w- I came here to check out this island yeah. you know, alright 
So there, there's something, steal everything there's and... something interesting about that, too. Because at first I was thinking, you know, the island in New Leaf, you could basically very early in the game just grind at that island, get like 90,000 bells and pay off your house mm-hmm. immediately. Mm-hmm. That's not like this with these islands. So you could see in the trailer, oh, sure. there's nook miles. So yeah. the way to get them is by doing like the achievement tasks. And yeah. You spend the nook miles to get a ticket to then fly to those islands. So it's not like something you can just easily spend 2,000 bells and go to the island for. Sure. You can't get bells. It looks like for a lot of stuff, he, at one point he sold like some supply nails or something like yeah. for bells. And so I imagine like, what if, what's like end game right. in this where like, right. what if I hit a point where I'm like, I'm, I've I've made every piece of furniture that I want. There's a right. lot of other stuff I could make, but like sort of styles are concerned. I'm pretty good. My house is done. Like all the rooms are finished. And then, yeah, I just find myself just having like some extra crap. Like, oh yeah, okay, I'll sell that for bells. Yeah. But that's where I wonder, it'd be fun if like, say you were, you know, uh, a dad or your brother like playing with siblings or something and like you're just huge on fishing and like my cousin's not, but he's playing. And so he needs fish for some quest. Maybe he can send me a letter and in that letter is like, I need the money miles for this and like mm-hmm. oh I can help you and then that puts that on my to-do list and I can help him out yeah. or just something like okay you have you, you I need nails for one thing you got the wood for this let's trade I could see a lot of that happening organically anyway yeah. but I was you know wondering if there was some way because I they had shown that like you chopped you, you hit the tree you get wood you need that wood to build stuff yeah. I mean, obviously there's going to be so many other little tiny trinkets or little collections of, of things I'm going to need it'd be nice if that was parsed out in a way that made sense that I could communicate and just send you something yeah yeah i hope we can play animal crossing uh new races together (laughs) but i just imagine after after a couple months we're gonna have stuff that we don't need and like sure i always need bells i can sell it for that but it'd be nice if you're like oh like that's worth a lot to me because i have some dumb couch that i just yes that's exactly the amount of thing i need i think like so much of that is just going to be visiting people's towns though right Mm -hmm. it's like i mean that's the natural process of animal crossing like you said and it works that way yeah you go visit somebody you're like oh i need this thing you go on the app you chat whatever and oh my god the app Having the chat on your actual phone mm-hmm. instead of being like the keyboard where you have to go through across everything is going to be so much easier because we all know how to like type on our smartphones. Yeah. That's going to be super simple. But the other big thing from the app that I wanted to bring up while we're still on this topic is the QR code thing mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. I have invested yeah. over minimum 200 hours making <laughs> patterns in New Leaf. Like seriously, I've made so many patterns. Well, not necessarily if they weren't going to bring the New Leaf patterns back. Smart for them to bring the right. patterns back. Yeah, right. Because now there's like so much content. You that's out uh, there. wasted your time. Exactly. My that's no, my kidding. point. I would have, no, I, they wouldn't be kidding. I'd absolutely feel like I wasted my time. I couldn't bring it all over. So now that you know you can actually transfer all that stuff through, yeah. I think it's going to be even better because from the get go you're going to have these amazing patterns, this wealth of stuff that was already available online that people who didn't pick up New Leaf for like four years have missed, yeah. they've moved on from the community or whatever, they're going to see all these amazing things and then yeah. populate their town with it. It's great. And just seeing creative... It's another thing, too, that I, I'm a huge fan of Dragon Quest Builders, and I brought this up when we did reactions, where there was a spot in Builders where you could go and just see they would just cycle every like 10 or 20 minutes uh, out of just a random collection of people. And again, this could be people in the US playing or Japan oh, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I could just like see their house and go. Yeah. And, and this was a, a plot of land that was designated specifically. It's like, so if you build here, you know other people are, if you have it switched on, like, yeah, other people just might see the thing that you're building. And some people wouldn't even build like a really nice house. They would just write some funny word or something. Or like <laughs> something that's, that you I would, mean, that's not the yeah. fun of Animal Crossing though, too. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you make um, like a meme in your town and people come to see it and so take photos. So yeah. it'd be fun if there was some kind of, you know, like a museum type thing where I could go and then just see random shirts made by people or random designs or, or meet random people. Um, so, but again, it's, I, I'm really having, these aren't things that I was like dissatisfied or frustrated that aren't in there. It's just like, they showed me stuff today that I was not expecting. So then I'm like, well, okay, as long as we're here, yeah. what, uh, what would the series benefit from? But I'm, I'm just across the board. I'm so stoked. Me too. Mm. I have a question for discarded digit. Which okay. is about something that they maybe they could add in the future. Sure. That it seems like a lot of people would be interested in. Um, this is probably the most controversial thing that came out of this Animal Crossing Direct. Um, apologies for the negative topic, but this is an important discussion. <laughs> sure. In the Animal Crossing Direct, they had a quick slide mentioning the one and only method of save data backup. Only accessible to Nintendo Switch Online members, which is an island restore in case your console gets broken or damaged or stolen. This restore can only be used a single time. Um, they link to several sources confirming that. Uh, and there is also a confirmation that you can't actually transfer your island to another Switch. Additionally, Nintendo, Nintendo confirmed that in the event uh, that 
event data for holidays and events will come in the form of free downloadable updates. This is most likely being done to discourage the act of time traveling, yep. but I imagine they'd also have stricter checks against that built into the game. So my question is this, how draconian will Nintendo go to protect against cheating and tampering? How much is too far? I'm going to add a real quick note to this. So, yes, everything they said about the lost damage system, the one-time restore coming later this year is true. But uh, on Nintendo's UK hub page um, for the for Animal Crossing, there is a blurb that says, uh, while the game does not currently support the ability to transfer your save file from one Switch console to another, a function specific to Animal Crossing New Horizons to move users and save data to another console is planned for later this year. Cool. So if you buy a new console and you want to move over that, that will come as well. So there actually will be two methods okay. to doing it. Just the lost one is a one-time only deal. Okay. So okay. So with that in mind, yeah, how do you feel about this policy that they're implementing, their approach to online here and save data? I mean, for In terms of holidays, I actually kind of like this. Because you deal with, I mean, in every Animal Crossing community, with every game, people who immediately just time skip to the holidays, yeah. get the entire set, and then try selling them online for like tons of bells. <laughs> and then it just becomes this weird like micro economy within the game that you don't want to deal with. Yeah. So them like adding the free updates for the holidays, I'm actually cool with. And one thing I haven't seen anybody talking about in terms of this is that if they're rolling out the holidays as like a free update every, you know, every year, who's to say that then the Halloween event the next year isn't going to be different? Like well, they have oh, the yeah. opportunity to do that now, sure. and I don't know if they will, but I think they could actually do that. You could have like a cute little Jack set one year, mm. and then another year you could have bats. And mm. you guys are laughing, but I'm I'm getting excited. Well, no, I'm not laughing like. at that. I'm laughing because I imagine Rossetti. Like you go to like how you go to October 31st, 2020, and Rossetti <laughs> pops out. It's just like, oh sure, it's that Halloween. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, I so, want I want to see that. So everyone the in the town is like, Happy too. Halloween, yeah. and he's like, No, no, yeah. no. They played they played his theme during the direct. But it's not Rossetti. Yeah, it's, it's not his voice. When you like time travel, somebody was no, saying it's like, when they rescue you from they like rescue. I'm mean, not time travel, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but like um, he's trying fast to stop travel. you from time travel. Fast <laughs> travel, yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever yeah. the heck he was doing. Also, you know, uh, with the exception um, holidays aside, I imagine they're going to have just other updates, just oh, yeah, other for sure. uh, around events. Like one thing that would be so fun that I'm just completely inventing, but I would just like get a huge kick out of is if you could like have a switch in your house. And like you weren't actually like playing Switch games, sure. but it say it would just be like the menu of the Switch games. You'd see like the menu of Fire Emblem like on your TV, like in the house. Oh, cute! Oh, and so it was the idea that like you were playing Fire Emblem, yeah, yeah, and those awesome. like, like came a Metal Gear Solid. I heard you like to play Castlevania. <laughs> so just kind of yeah. yeah. So like yeah. every you know like they would have with the 3D, um, you know, uh, that you can unlock on the 3DS. Yeah. When, like a new game came out. There's like a new screen. It's cute. And they, so they could have little updates like that that would remind you of other Nintendo games that were happening, or yeah, you know, like, like a, a little Switch light. You know, yeah. like when the, oh, the when the pink Switch light comes out, like you could have one. On your no, desk, new, and like, like not just many, like new games, like they do the demos through Animal Crossing. Yeah, in New Horizons. Like you go to your house. Yeah, that's a little crazy. And that's how you access it, and it just yeah. boots it up because they did that with the NES game. Well, you can, I mean, you could do that library. with literally any DLC in any Nintendo yeah. game. Is if you yeah. click the eShop button, it just sends you to the eShop. There's no reason why if they have like a little demo thing in Animal sure. Crossing, you click just it and then it just sends it. you to the eShop. Go to a friend's house. Buy. Did sure. you know that this game is? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love, I love. I mean, every game and service pretty much like does the seasonal stuff like that, and I love it. Like because they do these really cool themed events. They usually do do new stuff most of the time every year, and. And thinking of the ones that I've played through, it'd be really weird if you could just, people could skip ahead and do them before you and stuff. Like it, it, it's kind of fun to be in the yeah. moment and like you do it during the event and yeah. it passes. So I know this has been like a staple of Animal Crossing forever, time skipping and stuff like that. It's like oh, I want to get all that stuff. It's my game. I bought it. But it does feel like they are trying to push more of like an online presence here. And it sounds like every, like the economy is going to be a little bit more important. So you got to protect the economy when you go to an online game. You can't let people bypass that stuff and ruin it for yeah. you because it's going to make it a miserable experience for everybody else. Yeah. But it also gets me thinking about like we talked about like potential crossover stuff. I mean, imagine I'm doing like a, a like a for like say Metro, like Breath of the Wild two's coming out potentially sure. whatever. Yeah. They do a, like a launch event in the game where like yeah. they do everything's like decorations and stuff for like Hyrule or yeah, something like, like that. <laughs> what do you like a Metroid theme once or a Metroid uh, just floating around like I just, would for, really flying around your just town. Like or one, like, oh yeah, for God. one week only. Come I would here, enjoy that very much. Yeah, be so cool to do. <laughs> that. I mean, that's the that's like yeah. the Nintendo centric stuff I'm talking about. It's like yeah. really that's the only other thing that they could do for me where I'm like okay, this even goes above and beyond the Call of Duty, right? Because everything else in the game, and I guess we're kind of moving away from the save data thing, and I guess that is kind of the negative yeah. thing, so we yeah, should yeah. talk about that really yeah, briefly. Yeah. It's, with the save data thing, I think if you if your system gets stolen, yeah. you could transfer your save data over to another system. So like if you lose it or something gets broken or something, I'm sure there is still a way, if you have the serial number, you'll be able to transfer that data over, but so long as they're adding like a secondary thing where then they will be able to do it from one switch to another, I think that's fine. 
Like the issue, I think, is a lot of people, for example, they have the new Animal Crossing themed Switch, like with those really pretty like mint and blue mm-hmm. Joy-Cons and everything. Mm-hmm. Most people, if they're gonna have one Switch to play Animal Crossing on, probably wanna play it on that system if they're a hardcore Animal Crossing fan. However, that system is sold out everywhere. Yeah. You can't yeah. get it. And so they're gonna <laughs> wanna play the game immediately, so they're gonna wanna play it on their initial Switch. So I think three, four months in, if they don't have this easy solution, you're gonna get a lot of people with stolen Switches or broken Switches that are gonna wanna transfer their save data over to their new Animal Crossing one they finally got their hands on. Sure. And that becomes a bigger problem for Nintendo and not really the user. You yeah, know? I mean, it's not just game, this game, but I mean, we all like, pretty much expect them to have like a new model switch at some point in the future as yeah. well. And people jump to that, like yeah. not just Animal Crossing, any game that's been locked out. It's like, uh, my, if you don't uh, like, don't don't a- offer a system to system save transfer, like almost everything that doesn't support cloud backups does. Yeah. But I guess the point we're making earlier is like if they are trying to push like more of an online experience with this game and online focus, that's one of the things you kind of expect of a as a game as a service. Yeah, I have game no is that, idea whether is, is that like your save data is on the server side, like yeah. it should yeah. be tied there and it should always be there and available. If I lose my switch, who cares? Go get another switch. Lo- like log, log on, log you log got in. It. Yeah, yeah, it should be tied yeah. to my account. Absolutely. So it's a little weird. Can you imagine you're like blocked yeah. out and you're just like, oh. oh, I can't do it. And it's like, I can go to your town. And oh. I'm in your town right now. And, and the you know, fact like, that they say the person who steals your switch gets to have your 600 hour town. <laughs> you what just was Ben's name? just ravaged. What was the guy? Let's fly to your island and all your villagers are just dying of hunger and they're laying there. Ben's nemesis? What's the guy's name? Petey? What was the guy that stole his 3DS in the airplane? Oh, uh, and it was the Ben. Oh, yeah. Ben, ben left his 3DS yeah. on an airplane yeah. or, or just lost it or something. And then it's a PJ. <laughs> PJ. And then he like the guy like replaced the 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 um, the Wii the, the avatar. But what do they call it? The, oh, the Mies. Me, the yeah. Mies, yeah. yeah. And so they, like he had like this face, and so like, it was a you know this meme forever. We finally oh, like, dropped it a little bit, but we just PJ oh. kept the, the smirk of this guy. You could see the face of your enemy <laughs> in me form. These the f- nemeses. Oh gosh, poor Ben. <laughs> yeah, sorry Ben. But we, ta- but the, it's it's funny that we were talking about again just the, the culture of Animal Crossing that yeah. like trolling is sadly such a part of it. Just but like part of, I, see, you know going and stealing stuff from your friends, oh, stealing yeah, all the fruit, yeah, yeah. knocking trees well, down. I, I like, don't mean that though. Like that side, I don't like. Yeah. No one ever likes griefers. griefing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But like trolling is funny for sure. Like yeah. you go to someone's town and like you put some type of pattern like in their house and then you go to their thing and then they, all of a sudden like all their villagers are wearing your pattern <laughs> and they're like, oh, this guy's the greatest. Why don't you make patterns like this? Like that's yeah. the kind of stuff that's really funny so yeah yeah. But I, can't, I just can't think why they would do it I don't know I'm racking my brain maybe I just never think about these kind of things that often because I don't I've never Transfer. run into issues like yeah, this. Same. It's a little weird that the save data, they admit that this, there's save data backed up on their on the server side. Mm. And that's how they're doing this one-time emergency <laughs> yeah, recovery. Right. Yeah. So by admitting that, I think they've like, now... Why couldn't they just do they it? They let people peek inside just enough that I think they're going to get the the backlash. from the, the Rightfully so. That's yeah. like, sure. just... Go all out and give us this, especially like you know the criticism leverage against their online service in general. Sure. It's just like, hey, this is something you could offer actually. Like, hey, Animal Crossing, you get your account saves your data online if you're an online member. Like, yep. that, you, that's something you pay for. It's yeah. cloud backup. That, yeah. yeah it's, the only other the only other thing about this save data cloud backup thing that kind of like has me racking my brain is that with this save data backup, like on one hand, I understand, but on the time travel side of things, right, where we're talking about the holidays, say 10, 15 years from now, right, I wanna go back and I wanna play Animal Crossing New Horizons. If I can't access the online, does that mean like holidays just don't exist in my game? And like on one end, maybe the free updates permanently then put the holidays in, but then that sort of negates what I said earlier, which is like, well, they could just do a new holiday every year or something. Yeah. Or like maybe six, seven years down the line when they finally decide to close the, you know, they had the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection for Wii, now they have Nintendo Switch Online. When they eventually decide to close that down, if they're gonna be like, here's one final update, all the holidays and everything are saved there, so now you have access to them for years and years to come. But it, it's a weird situation because potentially all of that holiday content, which you could always go back and revisit. Like I can go back to the GameCube game today yeah. oh, and go yeah. revisit all those holidays. I like I did it for New Year's. I literally <laughs> went back to my GameCube Animal Crossing and saw New Year's in there. So that would kind of sink if that was taken out of the game. And I'd yeah. be bummed by that. That's, some, that's something you would expect of like again of like a truly online experience, like like a, yeah. a game as a service or MMO or something like that. And when it's not when Animal Crossing not going all the way, you kind of like I, I kind of like feel more like you, where it's like. They should at least at the end or something offer a way to go back and yeah. experience all this because as I said they're all going to be free DLC updates so we'll find out with the first one after it's over can we time travel back to sure. it and like yeah. are they just not sure. going to care about yeah. going backwards sure it's just, sure, it's sure. Just only for, forwards it's only forwards they care about yeah. or will they do at some point like at the end like maybe every end of year oh here's all the previous year's mm-hmm. events unlocked for you now go mm-hmm. back and enjoy them and stuff like that but 
that that's what I would feel that they sh- they should they do. Should do. And I hope yeah, they yeah. do. I agree because it's I hate when you like lose out on that stuff, especially when the game is not completely one hundred percent an online driven mm. experience. Mm. Yeah, you know what I didn't think of until this very moment. Mm. What you were talking about? Mine is Bob the cat, right? The yeah. blue cat. That's yeah, yeah. that's my guy, and he's the actual not just the card, but the they've got that got an actual figure. The gifts. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Bob's definitely moving into my town. But the way they established <laughs> the amiibo, and I'm sure amiibo are probably going to do lots of different things because there are different amiibo. There's amiibo. There's villager amiibo, sure. and then there's people that work there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there are is a Tom Nook amiibo, and there's his his boys. They, they're not going to move into your town. Well, I mean, there are. What do there. they do? Yeah. Well, I know. Sure what do those the... amiibo so do? So I think they showed it in the direct, if I'm not mistaken. Right. There's like the photo booth area, right? Where you go and like you're in a theater or something, and you right. take pictures with them, and there's a dynamic camera. So I think it's like you invite the named characters to that area, or okay. it's like that you can invite them into your town to do stuff. Because to me, like yeah. when, when they were talking about inviting like other villagers in, like where you see Celeste from the museum and Harvey from the campground, I assumed that when they come to visit you for the first time, that's what unlocks, oh, now you can build the campground, now you can build the yeah. museum. But, I mean, maybe it's, there's something more to that. Yeah. I'm really not sure. The one thing I thought was kind of weird is like Nat the chameleon and like Chip the beaver guy who ran mm-hmm. the, the fishing thing. And Joan, they're all not there. It seems like Muppet Baby Jr., like all their kids are there. They've got like Daisy May is like the new little <laughs> boar with her snot uh, sticking out of her nose. And they've got like, uh, I think Flick is the red chameleon's name or something. Wow, so it's that's like some detail. This, yeah, I didn't. new uh, hmm, generation I didn't of that. animals and stuff, yeah. So I'm wondering what's going to happen with the old villagers because a lot of them have amigos. Yeah. So. Well, they're not villagers, mm. but you know what I mean? Like the name yeah. characters. The yeah. staff. Yeah, the yeah, staff. Right, staff. Right, right. I keep forgetting that name, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I have one more question. I know you were briefly talked about topography, but Steven Sosa, Jones, and, and you as well, Roger, yeah. uh, with the ability to now unlock a permit that lets you have more customization to your island topography, do you feel this added feature that makes this gen- – do you feel that this is the added feature that makes this generation of uh, Animal Crossing stand out from the rest? Yeah, um, I, it's. I, I don't think there's any um, landmark thing you could really like do to Animal Crossing that yeah. would like make it like totally blow up or just like man, if you're not into that, like I don't, I don't. I, it's just like you imagine like that friend that doesn't like Animal Crossing and you show him like a staircase and you're, you're like, right. <laughs> he's gonna do it. And he's like, I'm gonna play it. What? Yeah, right. You know, right. right. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that, that I mean that's just tremendous detail, and it's yeah. it makes me that truly makes me think about a village in a totally different way because I'm gonna like see something and um, you know not only realize like oh I can vault over that or I can skip over that or I can climb that, but like okay, do I want to? Um, you know, not just there's a space and I'm going to uh, figure out what I want to put in that space. Do I want something to be there at all? You yeah. know, and do you know how is traffic gonna flow here? And so it's interesting to think. I don't know how much. Am I going to let those things kind of guided by how the village just kind of sets itself up? Like, who, you know, because they're like, oh, you can move this person in next to me. It's like, well, I haven't met that person yet. Right. I don't know what they're like. <laughs> like I don't want yeah. to. I don't know. It's like, will someone going to feel bad when I'm just like, why don't you move o- o- over there? <laughs> yeah. And they'll be like, why? Why would you yeah, want me to move right, over there? Right, like, right, oh, right. I don't know, feng shui. It's yeah, just kind of, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't like you that much. But um, so it's really going to be interesting. How hard is it going to be to create materials for those things? Mm. And uh, what's, what you know, what's going to be the, the journey to make making those things happen and by then am I just going to be like clamoring it's like god have a bridge there mm. or I don't know it's it's going to be really interesting to see what I put and where and uh, what the materials you need like to do that stuff yeah. but um I uh, cuz and and the one to be to bring some kind of potential negativity to this it is it is funny to me that like I think at least 4 months in the whole like <laughs> desert island in the middle of nowhere aesthetic is just gone. Like, there's always oh, been yeah. beaches. Of course. You of know, course. and like by the end of that, it looked like a full on metropolis yeah. that they were yeah, just yeah. setting up. So, this yeah. whole just kind of like, you know, um, uh, what's the, what's the, uh, come on, at Disneyland, the big tree, the uh, oh, Swiss Family Robinson vibe oh, is just yeah, okay, shot. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. yeah, you may have that for the first month or two, and then, it, then it's just Animal Crossing, you yeah. know, yeah. which I was a little nervous. You know, I was like, is this, is this going to have a camping vibe the whole time? I love camping, but like, sure. yeah, I would love to have a big house I would love to um to you know to customize that and it just seems the scale of this was like thankfully yeah you know like as big as I would imagine as big as a you know maybe not as as big as a breath of the wild but definitely like refreshingly the visuals nice and crisp the world nice and big all this new functionality like it, it blew up in so many ways that it was like yes oh, yeah. 
Mm. I, yeah, part of me was Pleased. also kind of worried about the the camping thing at the very beginning because I'm like, mm. we already did the campground stuff with New Leaf. I don't need to do this again. But oh, I, and Pocket Camp and Pocket Especially. Camp does it too. Oh, yeah, well, and, and now like if you play Pocket Camp, you get the new items. Then yeah. you go in there, the OK Motors thing, which actually looks pretty cute. It they does. Got the little casino machine. I know. The little RV models. They're gonna be real cute. I want those in my town. Well, you're a big Animal Crossing but, fan. How do you feel about Pocket Camp? I don't Just play to... Pocket Camp. <laughs> <laughs> I put 850 hours into New Leaf. I do not play Pocket Camp. <laughs> there you go. I played Pocket Camp for so two months. Good. In the very beginning, in the very beginning. And I was like, I'm not playing this anymore. And then they added like the update where they're like, oh, but we added all this cool new stuff where you streamline it. Yeah. I played for a day and I'm like, okay, back to Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm done. Sure. Like, I just never. Wait. And again, that's saying something because I'm a hardcore <laughs> animal You're, You know fan. the name of the hamster, man. Yeah, that's I know what I was wondering. Hamster, bro. Yeah, but... I know half the villagers' names. I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> I think going back to the topography thing, Thing, though uh, one thing I noticed in this you talked about it a little bit was like the grids and mm -hmm. that's like such a much needed feature of Animal Crossing because yeah. in New Leaf you would make these public works projects and then uh, you walk to an area where you think it would fit and Isabel would be like oh you're one block too close to the river <laughs> yeah oh you're and you can see clearly yeah. in this direct they're like throwing things right on top of the river and I think some of that has to do with the fact that you could just change the way your island mm -hmm. looks at any time so the game like can't register that because then all yeah. of a sudden someone's going to take it out and the thing like falls in the water mm -hmm. so I, that I thoroughly appreciate but I do wonder kind of like what you said about like the stairs how much things are going to cost versus like items that you put in the stairs and the bridges all seem like they're by, based on bells it doesn't seem like they're material based. I could be mm. wrong, but like based on what I was watching, it looks like bells. Or both. You can just, you well, know, yeah, but the, it's cost effective if you get the supplies, right. or you can just spend double and, you but know, But then drop that adds a whole other nook mile thing on top of it, too. Because then, mm. like, if you've got these nook miles and you can exchange them for bells or exchange them for tickets or whatever, or like furniture, how does that play into all of it? And I'm sure we'll find out like a week into the game yeah. after playing. We'll be like, oh, okay, this is how you want to manage your time. But. Yeah, the topography th stuff, I, like I said, is amazing. To me, it is a game changer. Like, to me, as somebody who's been playing it yeah. for so long who wants to, like, customize everything and have, like, one little part of my city walled off with the three walls from Attack on Titan with the giant thing in the middle would be awesome. <laughs> then you walk down the side and you've got, like, Hunter, uh, Hunter, Hunter, like, Heaven's Arena or whatever. I keep smacking the microphone because I'm so excited. <laughs> but, uh, like, I, that's... The level of customization I've always wanted out of Animal Crossing. I just want Ian's to have so. like a Bloodborne house. It's just candles. Oh, oh you, you, know, you probably could at this point. I mean, you could do anything. I had a Cracker Barrel in my basement in my old <laughs> Animal Crossing game where you can go eat breakfast, and then the top floor was like the first um, part of Inception. You know where they're going uh, in and like yes. the walls break in. So I made the whole thing with the exotic furniture set, like Inception with the little nice. spinning top thing. And I went online and searched with like the Japanese players to get it because it was Japan exclusive. Bro, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Animal Crossing. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. And, and one thing that I, I was a little bit disappointed because it was, this, I was like, come on, Animal Crossing, come on. Yeah. I would have loved to move the camera back a little bit. Sure, um, sure. I, I actually, with a pie in the sky, I thought it would be super cool, depending on how, you know, what that Switch can do, how you can run this thing compared to the 3DS and the DS uh, and the Wii to now. Um, and, you know, going all the way back to the GameCube of like, maybe I can look at the whole darn thing. Maybe mm. I can just really go up to God view. Sure, sure. And see even like little icons where yeah. it's just like, here's, you know, like, here's People your friend. Like, where's and, Bob? There yeah. he is. You know, and I could go find him. Um, but because we are still pretty close, like a little a little uh, closer than I would have liked to be. I'd like, like one like camera bump back. It'll be nice because there were some times, uh, especially like on the GameCube, where I'd be like, "Okay, time to go do my errands. I'm gonna run to that road," and then I just run and then like bump into the you know the cliff and be like, "Wait, where's the? Oh, it's just one click over that way. Yep. I can make roads now." So like, and actually like, I know the path that I take. I know because it's a grind and it's yeah. just, you, you, you oh, want yeah. you want to do the circle. Yeah. <laughs> you you want to yeah. just kind of like or or at least just kind of up and down and up and down. Yeah. Like find some path that I can do every day. You know, have my friends be close. You know, have you know the the topography be so obvious to me when I'm navigating that I don't really have to think I can just kind of like look at it you know with a side eye while I'm doing something else and just yeah. like yep follow that road and go over to my friend's house yeah that customization I'm curious how obsessed I'm going to get with that or how clear it's going <laughs> to yeah. be to me really just in in that like is it going to be clear to me how I want my town to be or am I just mm. going to be like I don't know do I want the red road or the I'm yellow road or the already. you know like well, yeah. it also depends on like what type of material you're going to be able to use because half of it was still blurred out in this not mm. blurred out but like it wasn't unlocked within yeah. the preview build so yeah. I would love to see what the other materials are going to be or yeah. what the other like public works projects are going to look like how you can customize your bridges it's the best I'm going to lose my life that's enough up to imagination that's pretty good <laughs> that they did that and I'm with you like one of my pet peeves is not being able to zoom out as far as I want on oh, yeah. camera but yeah. I understand with something like this it might be like this is a performance thing like showing sure. too much it might but be the, an issue the but, flip side of that is, yeah. looks great 
Oh yeah, yeah it looks, looks beautiful. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I sure. do wonder too because the original Animal Crossing was grid based. I mean, I guess this still t- kind of technically is. It always has been, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's like fully grid based in the old one. You go from the screen, yeah. you literally just see the screen, and then you move to the next one, and it sort of does that same yeah. thing. So, yeah, yeah, screen rolling. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, wrap up the segment here? I think it would take a lot for me to be like furious. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like, really have to drop the ball. <laughs> yeah. And I think the, the, the like the major concern ever since. You know, before they announced uh, uh, New Horizons, before there was kind of camping vibes, even like Pocket Camp came out, I was like, they're going to do camping, aren't they? Like, mm. I was just nervous they were going to go so far into gimmick land that they were going to try to like steer the whole franchise in one particular direction to accommodate this like weird thing that they had. And uh, it seems like even though that is the theme, and like I said, that is the beginning of it, you can really fashion this to be anything. I remember them talking about like a 45 degree angle. Is that still happening? That it's not just like 90, that you actually can kind of corner stuff. So you can put a couch like in the corner and not just flush against one wall. Well, that's a whole other thing. The way they like set up the furniture, they took that from Happy Home Designer, Mm -hmm. which was like the spinoff game on 3DS where you just design houses. Yeah, Yeah, now you can multi-select things and like move stuff on your wall. And Yeah, if you put something on the floor, you can choose what direction it faces. And it's not like you have to walk up to it. You know the old games, you have to like push and they go, you don't do that anymore. I mean, you can. I'm sure there's an option to do it you could pull it and push it if you want that like Remote, yeah feeling, grab but, stuff and yeah. slide it around walls and yeah. stuff yeah 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 they did their homework with that one yeah. they, they, they knew people would prefer that over like just doing the traditional way for yeah. sure and it, I, I think it's important that they give the option yeah but i like it streamlined you know yeah. what i mean like that's that's something i like streamlined it's got, funny because usually usually call these types of things that we just watch for 27 minutes like quality of life improvements sure. like something that would potentially come to like an MMO like I see I could sure. see Final Fantasy 14 having a direct very similar to this where they're just like here are all these new features that are coming to this one area that you can go to but like quality of life like is Animal Crossing like that is it's amazing right. how all of the little tiny things I don't think there was anything that they mentioned that wasn't a big deal to me it's just they no. all were a, a, a big That's deal for various hear, reasons yeah. or a big deal which is why again when we I, I kind of chuckled when it happened when they talked about the online thing but it just didn't i don't think it's you know knock on wood nobody steal my switch but like sure, i just right. don't think it's uh right. um i'm gonna hold it very close when i go to disneyland I'd be like no protect it there, my town is in the air don't touch that yeah. i think the biggest improvement too for me which is again not something that you would like notice right away is just like the personality of the villagers this time around like mm. the things that they're doing around the town like i don't know if you guys saw they're brooming up the paths mm-hmm. some of them are just like sleeping against trees yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got people like sniffing the flowers walking around with that their vacation so juice much. like yes. that's that's the kind of stuff i've always wanted out of animal crossing because it makes you feel like you're actually in the village with these characters yeah. as opposed to the old games where like they'd walk to a certain area and then they'd get stuck and you dig the little holes and they just keep walking in the same direction and then turn and walk in the other <laughs> direction so yeah I, I do like it feels like a more lived in environment now which is I yeah. think the biggest thing they needed to do to improve it not so. to raise expectations but again tapping into those updates you yeah. know it's just like and after they do after, they after you're in the game for a couple years you know yeah. you have one of your closest friends throw something at you you're like what did you say yeah. Yeah. you know like yeah. oh cool like they threw that in there and this isn't the Wii U generation anymore you know what I mean it's like the way that they've been improving upon mm-hmm. these games now it's like whether it's Fire Emblem Three Houses where they had like the side story thing or whether it's like Super Smash Brothers where now they're like yeah let's just do a second fighter pass why not it's like <laughs> yeah. that to me gives me hope that they know what they're doing with this so yeah, yeah. It I'm seems like the perfect franchise stoked. to do those kinds of things. Yeah, and going even back just, to even what you said too, yeah. it's like it, it does feel like okay, you got Breath of the Wild, like the definitive Zelda. If you got like Mario Odyssey, it's like one of the definitive 3D Mario games. Smash, like, Smash, Bros. the yeah, ultimate, the ultimate Smash. Smash game. And now you've got Animal Crossing, and at first, like you said, it's like it seems like it's going to be camping oriented. But now it's like, no, this really does feel like Animal Crossing Ultimate. Yeah. You could bring all your amiibo villagers in and you have all these extra features. It's like, why wouldn't you play this one? I'm sorry, New Leaf. And I'm it'll done be, with you now. I'm <laughs> curious to see because it also, this was also the franchise that like, you know, made me, I played Persona finally. I played Yakuza yeah. game finally. There's oh. so many franchises that I've never touched and just across the board on all these different systems, like I tried them out. I hovered. Literally my thumb was on the purchase button for Fire Emblem Three Houses and I didn't do it. Oh. Because I knew I didn't have the time. I, it was just time. It was purely yeah, time. Yeah, nothing killing me. Time. But I've never... He's I've never played a Fire Emblem game before. And it's, it's no and, excuse. You gotta they, play Fire Emblem 3. But they got me that far. No. They got me that far houses. to look at it in the store, you know? It's like, <laughs> and so I imagine some other person that would tell me, I almost bought New Horizons. Yes. I almost bought it. And yeah. I'm like, oh, you gotta do Well, you can try now. Yeah. But who is, you know, who, what, 
what what is that? Who are those fans? Well, what are those parts of the mm. Nintendo community that they're like, I just love the Switch so damn much yeah. that it does seem like a good fit for the console. And yeah, maybe it's finally time to jump in. I'm curious yeah. what they have to say yeah. about the series after all these years. It's, you know? it's interesting, right? Because we got Mario Odyssey and we got Pokemon. And like traditionally, the third biggest selling, which no one ever talks about, is Animal Crossing. On every system. You look See, at the that DS, I don't know. Animal yeah. Crossing sales? Like, whoosh, yeah. yeah. You look yeah, at the Wild DS. You look huge. at the Wii even. Yeah. Like, you wow. look at mm. Every single system Animal Crossing is on, it sells gangbusters. Cool. And so, like, looking at the early sales for Switch and, like, looking at the stuff that's already sold, even, like, with the controversy behind Sword and Shield, and now it's like, oh, the fastest selling Pokemon game of all time. Like, yeah. sorry, we didn't have the National Dex. Doesn't matter. Here's an yeah. expansion pass. It feels like you're going to hit that art- audience that would already buy it anyway. Yeah. But like you said, I do think there's going to be people who now have a Switch who maybe dropped off Nintendo platforms for, like, one or two generations. Maybe, like, haven't had one since the Wii and are now going to go, oh, this looks pretty cool. I remember Animal Crossing on the GameCube. Yeah. And those are the ones that are going to be, you know, sunk back in. I wonder how, how much they're going to blow up the in- updates that happen to Animal Crossing. I wonder if that's the kind of thing where it's like, you'll know it's coming because you're in the game and you you sign on in the morning oh, and sure, it's like, sure. oh, hey, or you find out like two days in advance somebody yeah. pops into town and they're like, I'll be back in two days and I'm going to do this. And you're yeah. like, oh, neat, good to know. Or if it's going to like sneak into a direct, you know, like yeah. at the end, just like a quick, quick little lip service too. where they're like, oh, and Animal Crossing fans might be interested to yeah. see you, what the game's going to do in the next three or six months or something if it has that much clout to come back. I you wouldn't know, be to, surprised to, either on social media or on their uh, their hub site for it. They just do like kind of like a blog style like update thing, like yeah. letting, letting you know, like, hey, get a preview of like this upcoming, like the the Easter event, or whatever the first one they're sure. doing. It sounds like it's going to probably be that. It's just like yeah. here, here's what's going to be involved in stuff. You know, yeah. it'll be running from this date to this date, so be sure to like not miss it and stuff. Maybe throw like a little like Twitch video clip of it up there just to give you like a preview of what your town might yeah. switch to with the festivities and stuff. Yeah. Is your hamster friend going to be like, do you hear E3 is today? Right. Oh, right. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Not that it matters. Half the companies aren't even going this yeah, year. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, one other thing that you were mentioning, too, with like the, the mainstream stuff and how they're going to feel about this game <laughs> is that I do feel like with Nintendo specifically, I know lots of hardcore Nintendo fans that have never played an Animal Crossing game. Hmm. And that are not like that with Pokemon and Mario, but specifically are like that with Animal Crossing. I think the audience they really need to hit Going back to what you were saying and what you were saying earlier, too, is like with these updates and these in game events, they got to do stuff where, say, like Three Houses is coming out. And you said, like, your button, you know, you were yeah. hovering over that buy button. You're like, I'm going to buy it. What they should do is like an in game event in the game before Three Houses comes out where, like, a black eagle moves in or like a blue lion. And they say, Hey, do you know about this game coming yeah, out in a couple yeah. days? <laughs> it's really cute. I'm based on this game. And I guarantee you, you're going to get all these people who probably wouldn't buy it and go, yeah. I want to check that thing out. So I think it's actually the reverse. I think it's more getting the Animal Crossing people into other Nintendo. Nintendo franchises sure. that aren't just like the mainstream Mario and Pokemons, as opposed to just getting the Fire yeah. people. Because they all got phones. Yeah. I mean, if I got the phone, I'm yeah. assuming the other. I'm assuming my villagers totally. also got smartphones. Totally. And then just like seriously, just Bobby Cat's just like staring at it. You go up and talk to him, and it's just like dot 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 dot. And you like click at it like a third time, and he's like, "What?" And he's like, "Oh, sorry, I was just watching the direct. That was a good direct, See, right?" And, I, and the crazy <laughs> thing is, I know some people would hate that. I know Kyle. there are people who hate that. I would think it's the cutest thing Kyle on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Bossman. I would love like, yep. that. Hey, <laughs> if you get if Clay the Hamster walks up to me like you said uh, with his smartphone <laughs> and says hey did you know Sakurai just announced a new character for the five of I would think that is the cutest thing on the planet I'd be like oh. Clay have me over to your town you, man. please I want to come play this game with you that's a, like that kind of advertising I always think is so cute like yeah. uh, the cup noodle stuff in like Final Fantasy 15 mm. so many people hated that stuff for whatever yeah. reason I thought that was one of the funniest things about that game <laughs> was the fact that you could play through like with a cup noodle head and it, it doesn't always work obviously with every yeah. franchise but Animal Crossing is tongue in cheek enough it totally works it yeah. would totally work yeah, yeah. Oh man! Woo. But I was just telling yeah. Damiani, I, have to, I I now have to like get in my car and go home and stop thinking about Animal Crossing because it's just <laughs> not going to help. Were you up I didn't at five a.m.? It just was not. No, because mm-hmm. we did the we did like delayed reaction. So I'm, I'm super fresh on this. I've only seen oh, it once, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, we just watched it right before we shot the other podcast before this. But I was just so sold on this. Oh yeah. Me and other people, they were like. Four or five friends. There's one friend especially that like Oops. is getting a switch for that. Like I'm gonna make sure I gave him the date. I was like March, the end of March is yeah. when you are buying a switch because yeah. stuff will come out. And I was like, I think you might like this game. And well, it's on Switch though. And I think you might you'd be interested in this. Maybe Switch is like the good console to play on. But you know, you don't have a Switch. It's fine. I'd be like, guess who's getting a Switch? Yeah. And like my other friends that do have a Switch, it's like there's no. It's not. Oh, if you get it, we'll enjoy it together. Like you are getting this yeah and i'm gonna play this with you so this is a big deal yeah well this it is, is uh, kind of the last holdout for me you know it's like Met- a lot of people metroid, waiting for yeah. pokemon mm-hmm. and smash bros and now it's animal crossing but even metroid i feel like it's time and Pikmin. i feel like most people who are going to buy metroid aren't even nintendo switch like i don't, oh, I don't sure. know if there's people yeah, yeah, waiting yeah. Mm-hmm. To, you know to buy a switch when metroid comes out i think at this point if you don't have a switch 
I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, you know, switch. Come on. You probably yeah. have a switch. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, switch now. Thank you for joining us, Brandon. Oh, Jones, my pleasure for this uh, <laughs> Animal Crossing discussion here. I, I'm so glad you got to get this out. Like, it felt like you. Like, oh, this had works. A lot, yeah, lot to say about this. Oh like, yeah. I gave you the perfect avenue for it. That's the it. emotions. And I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's hang out. Yeah, nice. absolutely. I have the our beach. little village. Yeah, yeah. We have a village. Oh, one. Wait, one quick thing. Oh, yeah. While I'm thinking of it. The dodo codes. Yeah. So oh, this yeah, is actually yeah, yeah. as people who are content creators, right? Yeah. It's one of those things where you're worried about your community coming in and like cutting down your trees or whatever. Yeah. They have those little codes now where you could basically like siphon out the people that you know are going to troll your community. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's actually kind of nice. That yeah. it's, it's an easier way to interact with people. I think this is like the most content creator friendly Animal Crossing game they've ever made. Yeah. Which I think it's pretty cool. And I'm going to be yeah really paying attention to that to see if that evolves. Speaking of the updates yeah. that they can add, you know, across the app and yeah. all, all of that stuff. Got to play like a little bit of Pocket Camp, just a little. Bit. I got to play like one more hour into <laughs> play it, it to just get to the see. exclusive item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. then, I'm done. then never. Sure, just then I'm just done. In there. Yeah. Just uninstall yeah. it. That's how excited <laughs> I am. <laughs> stuff. Well, we will be right back to talk about the Fire Emblem Three Houses DLC, Cindered Shadows. Woo. So welcome back, everybody. Back here with Roger's Base, and yep. we're going to move on from Animal Crossing, and we're going to talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses, specifically mm. the recently recently sorry released DLC, Cindered Shadows, yes. the first significant story update to Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yes. And uh, you've been playing this, Roger. I have How been. have you been enjoying it? I've been liking the first three chapters, uh, and I don't want any story spoilers, but I want to ask you one thing. Sure. One very basic thing. Does this side story... Resolve in a way where all three houses are happy at the end of the day. Okay, so I will say this, and this, so there will be. I will not spoil anything either here. Okay, so I'm gonna go very. I'm gonna paint a very broad stroke here. This is, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna say the two things I am convinced of. I don't know if this is official, but there's okay. two things I'm convinced of. Okay. One, that this is not canon. That this okay. is that this is a side okay. a what if story. Got it. Got or it. Got a, it. Got a, it. Got a, it. another like because each. Each route has its own ending, absolutely. Which so is the, why the, I ask. Yeah. So yeah. like, treat this like another like this like your pre time skip route. This yeah. is a new route or something. Pre time skip. That pre eventually. Yeah. yeah. There's no post time skip got in it, got the it, got it, got DLC it, got it. part of it. That's okay. Now, uh, is there like of the three like the, it's nice seeing the three house leaders together, together and stuff. Right. And there's no conflict there. That's what I. If mean. you're looking for any of the main story right. conflict to rear its head here. It is a most. It is all isolated. Okay. It is focused on the Ashen Wolves. It is focused on this new area, the, the abyss, sure, basically, sure. and a character who has like almost. N uh, it's just this new church character, this cardinal named uh, Alfred. Right, right. And uh, I met him. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. That, that's pretty much it. And honestly, uh, that would probably be. Uh, it's an interesting approach. Okay. But this is where probably my my biggest disappointment with the DLC mm. is. Is that of all the possibilities they could have done a prequel, sequel, or even if they wanted to do a side story? Yeah. This feel like calling it a fourth house, building up all this stuff, and it ultimately leads to being almost it's not important. Yeah. It's not that important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I felt a little disappointed by that. Okay. And I, I, on top of that, I couldn't get really attached to any of the four new characters. Oh, there's I, so, one in particular. So, so, we'll get. We're well, gonna get into this. So here's, here's one. Here's my particular. quick hot take. Here's my quick hot take. <laughs> this was like the D team. Okay. Like the three other houses are <laughs> like the like yeah the like whatever yeah. your personal preference yeah. is. They're yeah. the ABC teams. Sure. Whichever you want to rank <laughs> the them. Team. This is the D team. Yeah, like right. their characters to me didn't come close to some of the worst <laughs> characters of any of the houses. Sure. I was just like, and I get it. They only have so much a short amount of hours to sure. like cram the story in there, and. Yeah, I, maybe I set myself up for disappointment, mm. but at the same time, you it seems like you really have a favorite character here. And you have I, oh, I do. Yeah. But, but before I even get yeah. to that, though, the reason I ask that is okay, because yeah, yeah. that's what I'm expecting okay. going in, is I'm expecting that because that's what's been set up to me from everybody who's talked about it already because I just haven't had the time to do it. I've been busy playing other stuff and like watching other shows, and so I just haven't yeah. had the time to play through it. And I wanted to live stream the whole thing because I, like, I love streaming Fire Emblem. And the thing that I felt coming off of this was like, oh, this isn't going to be what I thought this was going to be. So when we got Revelations for Fates, mm -hmm. that was like the true root of that game, right? There was Conquest and Birthright, but at the end of the day, it's like, that's the canon root for this. And what I expected was that this fourth root would be the canon root. So when we saw all three together, I'm like, oh, so this is going to explain how the three classes could actually come together. And it's not no. that at all. And I could get no. that pretty much from the first like chapter of the yeah. thing. I'm like, oh, this is not... 
going to be that at all. Uh, yeah, I hate to say it. Yeah. It is like a very generic approach to yeah. the grander picture of Fire Emblem Three yeah. Houses. It, it it wants you to, it basically, it's treated, it's standalone. It yeah. wants you to not have to come in with any knowledge of the game. In right. fact, I almost feel I mean, like. It's literally from the main menu. Just yeah, side story. And that's and what I was right thinking. Yeah, this yeah. might have actually been better sold as like a, like a Torna situation. Sold standalone totally. yeah, yeah. as something for people who might have been a little bit more timid yeah. about the full Fire Emblem experience. Like here's like a sampler. I mean, I don't agree that the what they this ultimately ended up being is yeah. even good as a sampler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's some other things with yeah. it, good and bad. But the pre if they're going to go for this premise, they should have gone all in on this. Yeah. And the fact that, yeah, it's just a side story in there. It does unlock... You can recruit the characters in any of the four routes so that pre time I skip. Yeah, yeah so yeah, I know yeah. that you recruit them pre time skip, and then you could eventually get like the post time yeah, skip so version. Yeah, get the post and time skip. And that's cool. Yeah. And that gives me an incentive to go play back and play the other routes. But I mean, I've been on Easy Allies talking with you about yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses for sure. twice now. This is my third time talking about Three Houses with you guys. I've played through every route by this point. I've put in so many hours Same. into this game. I'm probably not going to go back and play. I might. But even at the point where I'm at in Golden Deer, which is the last one that I have left, but I know what happens in Golden Deer, I I'm not going to go back and restart with these characters. I mean, maybe I will, but if it's not really that important, I'll probably just finish the route that I have right now. And I think that is my biggest disappointment with this, is because when they announced it, I thought, oh, this is going to be like that true route, and it didn't end up being that. Um, with that said, yes, there is a character I really like. Okay. And her name is Constance Con okay. Von Nouvelle. I... Love Constance. Constance. In, in in the words of uh, whoever wrote the song, I am in love with the Coco. I absolutely adore Constance Von Neumel. So you got to the part where I forgot where they used her nickname <laughs> Wait, Coco, for the first time. Coco. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, okay, you got to it. No yeah. spoiler. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, that's very early on. It's like second yeah, for, chapter like, or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah it's I, super early. But um, I think the reason I like her is she feels the most like a Fire Emblem Three Houses classmate okay. of the other four. I think Yuri's like fine. But he's nowhere near as compelling as the other lords. He's kind of like the de facto leader of the place. And then you've got B, who's like kind of like this funny tough guy. But it's like, well, I have Raphael. I don't need you. Yeah. And then you. And then there's Happy, who like I don't even still know what her deal is. Like she sighs and then beasts come out or something. But I haven't yeah. summoned them. So I mean, like, you'll see. And yeah. It, but it's not. It's not. But it's not, not like, spectacular. Right. You're so, not getting. Whereas Constance has like this whole. Even where I am right now has this like whole arc, and she feels like the perfect mix of Ferdinand. And Marianne okay. from the original, because you know Marianne's like yeah. she's always sad and she's always downtrodden, and then she goes in the sun and she's feeling depressed. And then Ferdinand, just every battle he's in, I am Ferdinand von Eyer. It's like literally that because Constance goes in the sun, she's sad, and then every time she charges in, she goes, I am Constance von Neuville. <laughs> it's like I want to pair them together. <laughs> I want to play through the game again. I mean, yeah, and pair yeah, Ferdinand yeah. and Constance. Like that's I want to do that. <laughs> I think they match together. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been like the thing is like I saw. And all their characters, I saw a bit of the personality already displayed. Sure. So with some other characters. For people who haven't played all the routes, maybe you get a little sure. bit more out of them. So I don't want to speak for everybody. But at the same time, yeah, like the, I got a bit of the vibe that everyone already had a similar personality to another existing student uh, yeah. at Gary Mock. But I didn't – I don't know what it is. I know it's an anim uh, – correct me if I'm wrong. You, you're you, – be more of an expert in this sure. than me. But like the trope of like the dual personality thing, like I'm in the sun, I'm happy, now sure. I'm in the shade. Like sure. I was I mean, it's been done before. It's been sure. done before. For and sure. I was like, I was getting a little worried about like, is is this like this over simple like is this oh, a yeah. bad depiction of this? And I mean like, to be fair, it's like Fire Emblem. It, but it's, it's like it's like so that. tropey and stuff, oh, it like is. it can't it be is. taken seriously. Yeah. So at the same time, I'm just like Th that was my problem. Like it, like the I, I get. It almost felt like a not as bad, but like similar vein of the OG one to me is always going to be Dragon Ball's launch, launch, oh, basically sure, with the sneeze sure, sure. and with stuff. The, yeah, I mean sure. that's way worse Good and side, stuff. Bad but side, like yeah, that's sure. like the first like instance that I always will remember. And yeah. like seeing this again, like every time I see that trope, I'm just like, this feels a little like lazy. But at the same time, I will agree with you. Yeah. It felt like of the four characters, She's, yeah. she so had the most uh, like development and arc. I will say this: They try to make Yuri that, okay. but it's it's played <laughs> it out. Sounds like it doesn't work. So Yuri's is the most is very generic. Uh, that's yeah. making me describe. Everyone's pretty generic to me, but Yuri right. is the most generic at the end, and it is the most forced and cliche thing. Mm. And I, I, I can see why a lot of people have a problem with the character Yuri. So I haven't seen literally anyone talking about this at all. This is my first experience even uh -huh. discussing it anywhere since like playing any of it. And just from my own experience, I totally get what you're saying, that there is like a little bit of everybody else that's in there. Yuri, to me, feels like a discount Claude and mm -hmm. a discount Dimitri mm -hmm. slammed together and then put on sale. <laughs> that's like exactly what I feel. It feels like there's little bits of both of them that are in there, but it never really like 
solidifies into a character that I, I care about. And again, I'm early. I'm only chapter three, but like from what you're saying, it seems like I'm I'm not. I mean, he get he gets a, a monologue near the end where okay. he, and like they they really they oversell it in the fact that like they have three different characters kind of restate the same thing for like basically Yuri's backstory mm. and like what was going on there. And I was like, okay, I get it, I get it. We need yeah. to be like feel bad for this character sure, and sure, stuff. Sure. But anyway, going back to it, I think the problem is this DLC. With the, the the real estate they were given for like the dialogue, it, for whatever reason they didn't succeed in selling me on becoming too emotionally attached because they had this wonderful hundreds of hours of long gameplay sure. for like the main story, sure. three different routes to develop these characters, sure. and they did a great job with all these classes with all these students sure. in them, and this having that expectation going into the DLC, this was clearly. It, w- it was not the same. It was DLC. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have as great of a time with yeah. it because of that. And I think I'm just yearning more for, like, a new a new Fire Emblem or, like, a proper yeah. sequel or something like that. I would that. be willing to bet within the next Man. year we're going to get an Echoes. I think we're going to get an Echoes of Lin's game. Because to oh, me, okay. yeah, we yeah. got uh, the Echo with um, Alm and Celica, the Shadows of Valentia. Shadows of Valentia. Yeah, and that game was great. And there was a rumor that they, there was an Echoes game still in development for 3DS, 3DS. but then they yeah, obviously were yeah. making three houses focused on it. That seems like an E3 kind of announcement this year. It's like, hey, we're going to get an Echoes game scheduled for next February or we something. We had a question you know? here that I actually scrubbed because it was about the future of Fire Emblem. Oh, I, yeah. I, I'll get, uh, uh, I, I deleted the name, so I apologize. Yeah. But for the person who did write it in, an analogy through the, what you wrote... They brought that up that like uh, they saw in kind of uh, they saw uh, Scott the Waz bring it up in a yeah. video it was when oh, they yeah. first saw it oh, I love Scott. and then yeah. they saw the source was Imran Khan on kind of uh, oh, yeah, kind of yeah. funny games yeah, yeah. daily yeah, yeah. was the one who was talking about it former game editor yeah. basically yeah. saying that that's what they had heard and stuff but possibly was canceled though right. but you never know like E three yeah. you know I would it seems th- like it seems like an yeah. Echoes type announcement seems like a good early spring kind of game for them for that because i i truly believe we're going to get two mainline fire emblems on switch switch seems oh. like a 3ds kind of situation we're you know how we got like fates and awakening i feel like three houses is the awakening and there's going to be like a fates game near the end um as for what that'll be i have no idea but to me i mean even going back to the three houses stuff you were just talking about with like feeling the impact of the story that is totally the issue man it's like when the base game is that good like for me personally, Three Houses was my game of the year last year. I played a lot of stuff last year, but nothing like really stood above the rest. It was kind of like a strange year where there was a lot of good stuff, but nothing was like head and shoulders above the rest. But to me, it came down to what did I enjoy playing the most, and it was Three Houses. And I think it was because by the end of each route, whether that's Edelgard, Dimitri, or Claude, yeah. you're like you're feeling them. And I didn't even get to the end of Golden Deer. I know what happens, but I didn't even get to it myself. And I still felt for that character. I still understood their goals and like from very early on even. Like I immediately liked those characters and I knew what they were about. And so yeah, for me, playing through this one, it does just kind of feel tacked on. It, um, it's like when every one of the main characters actually has a moment to like Express their flourish. opinions. Yeah, they like steal the they steal the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. they yeah, are yeah. clearly better written. Yeah. They clear yeah. and like you do have an emotional attachment. Yeah, so there's some baggage there, but yeah. like that speaks to the power of them. Yes, and it, it, it's just like. On top of that, we haven't even talked about it just yet, but like all the social stuff is just axed from the sure, DLC. Yeah. They decide not to focus not on there. that because, yeah, yeah. like, it, for whatever reason, it would have been too involved. But by sacrificing that, I also sacrificed, I think, a lot of what I the loved in sure. the main characters and sure. how I became so attached to them. Sure. I didn't, I was like, can I even develop relationships between the four Ashen Wolves? No. I was like, it's, it's a just strange. a story delivered to you and told to you as is, and not, you're just going to take it. It's very linear, straightforward. And that's more of an older style of Fire Emblem, mm. and I like some of the older games but that's not what I liked about Three Houses right. and that's what I wanted more and, of. And that's not really what Fire Emblem's become in the past however many years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the thing again that was great about Three Houses is it mixed that like the hardcore and the casual support type of fans and put them together and got us like this really great package and so yeah to remove that aspect of it is just it's bizarre and even like maybe there's a story reason for it and I'm just not far enough in, but like even like the secondary characters that they bring with them, because you know you have you have Edelgard, Dimitri, yes. and Claude, and I'm sitting there and I'm streaming this, I'm streaming this and I see Hilda coming you first. And, I, and I'm like, okay, Hilda, Hilda makes sense. Hilda's like the second in command of Golden Deer. I'm like, great, Hilda, who, who's next? And it's Ash and Linhart? Lin- <laughs> what? I'm like, Lin- and why? Linhart Lin- Lin- be sleeping right now. Ash, what? why? You have you have literally, hu- they had the opportunity I because was. you don't get them in any other route. They yeah. could have gone, okay, we're going to have the three main ones and then their second of commands. We'll have Hubert, we'll have Dudu, and we'll have Hilda. And they all are together and it'd be hype. And I, I don't know if it was because they needed to balance out well, with the classes. So- because like... 
I, Didu isn't, he's an X user, he's not like a, a bow yeah. user. Well, you get but, class change uh, on, on uh, the characters as right. well, but like there's no like uh, 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 promotions basically. No. So yeah. that what they should have done is just balance it out where Dudu and Hubert would have, Hubert's already a mage. Yeah. Hubert's already a mage. Linhart does the healing of the, Hubert. <sighs> And well, you have Dorothea and Petra and Lysithia and all these other characters. It's like of all the characters you can bring I in, was the flesh so more content you could, for. Like, well, so there is. I, I'm so, I think you have to have seen it. There is a story between B and Hilda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. That I understand. So there, with the brother. there's yeah, yeah, yeah. a reason yeah, 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 for that for sure, one. For sure. But the other two aren't as like. I understand what they're going for, but like, yeah. Hilda was like the the strongest connection there. But yeah. even then, like, so the strongest of the three is Hilda's. Then, based to me, on, at least. Well, it was, I mean, that's yeah. where I yeah. I just got to that revelation of the story in like chapter two about their relationship. But I mean, so that makes sense. But then again, it's like why Linhart and Ash? Not to like hate any fans of Linhart and Ash, but it's just like of all the characters you could have chosen in this rich I was library of expecting to have a choice. Yeah, that was the thing. I was oh, like, I'll oh, I'll bring three along. Yeah, like pick like, your three. Marianne, come through. Yeah, Hilda, come through. Dorothea come through and then yeah. eat it. And I was like, None okay, we're gonna get a great story reason for why. Oh, well, Leonard, because we kind of knows each other. Need research and stuff. He's sure. probably gonna research something. Sure. It's like, okay, okay, sure. sure. You know who else researches stuff? Hubert. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know it. I know. <laughs> or the guy with the books in uh, what's his name from Golden Deer? I'm sorry. The guy with the books. Uh, yeah, what's uh, his name? Uh, I don't remember his, but maybe it's probably good we didn't get the guy with the books because I don't remember his name. Trying to remember all the Someone characters. Someone with an eye, isn't it? It's like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the one who can either become like a thief or an archer. Yeah, who's the uh, guy with the glasses? <laughs> oh man, well, That's, that proves my point. You shouldn't have added that guy. They better Sorry, off. Sorry, I started with yeah, Glendale yeah. and I fear so bad. I, I almost remember every character's names, and now I'm like, uh, crap. Yeah. But I also think of the the other professor, uh, Hanneman. Yeah, Hanneman. I was like, Hanneman's awesome. Ooh. Yeah. Also, you know, symbology yeah. professor yeah. and like expert, yeah. like, hey, maybe you could brought them along. Yeah. Manuela, I mean, hey, hey, okay. I love fine. Manuela too. Sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to keep wanting to say Ingrits, but it's that's not their name. No, it's, it's like Ignolts, I think. Yeah. Is it Ignolts? It's, it's it, not. I don't know. People are going to yell at us. It's fine. We'll look it up for you in a second and correct <laughs> ourselves. We'll expose us as fraud. But, yeah, right. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so like, I, I think I've expressed enough about like the, the story disappointment sure, sure. and stuff. And like we touched upon like the social link stuff. It's not there. Even though they sh- like, they show you who can be like S-ranked and stuff yeah. when you recruit them in the main one of the main sure, uh, sure. routes and stuff like that. And it's nice that you can unlock them and stuff like that. But I'm kind of curious about like uh, – your thoughts on the actual, like, the gameplay, the missions sure. and stuff. Because, real quick, I thought the difficulty was as harder than advertised. So, going yes. into the main game, normal was, like, like a ro- raffle stop mode for me. Mm-hmm. Yet, you could literally do no strategy and win. Sure. Hard was what I expected to be the baseline difficulty of sure. any Fire Emblem. Sure. And Maddening was, like, for the Too real hard. challenge. Yeah. And uh, got, got to a point where I was like, okay, this is what I expect. I didn't do enough planning in, like, earlier missions, and yeah. now I'm paying for it. Yeah. Or this is almost insurmountable. Yeah. I need to go back and do stuff. Yeah. For me... I don't know if you feel this way. Normal, uh, normal actually wasn't too bad for me. It was mm. a little bit harder than mm. a regular normal. Mm. And I saw what some people were saying. Oh, this mission was so hard and something. Mm. But hard was ridiculously so hard. I I play. I always play hard classic. Always. Yeah. I've literally never played a Fire Emblem not that way since Awakening. I, I I feel like that's the original way to play Fire Emblem. So I like to play it that way. And yeah, I was streaming it. And from the first mission, having streamed all these other routes yeah. and playing through it. I'm getting bombarded. I almost die on the very first mission, like the first turn. And I had to rewind and I went, okay, I gotta take a step back. Like these characters are doing something else. And the nice thing is I didn't really face the issue that my girlfriend had, which was with the first mission, Happy can summon those like beast things over and over again. And so, but I took her out right away. So I didn't deal with that, but apparently that first mission could be way harder if you leave her alone. It was the third mission with the dolls, yeah. where and I'm not even apparently at the hardest, which is the fourth, but that third mission with the dolls, I it's... thought there was a time limit. So I oh, went right for the doll in the okay. middle. No, and I thought, okay, you. well this is, I have to go for him directly. But then when I realized there wasn't a time limit, I'm like, oh, I can just take my time and take out the other ones. But then when I realized when I did that, they just keep summoning them. It's like, it's yep. infinite. So I go, okay, well I can't do that. I thought I could maybe level up these other you know partners that are with me bring them all up to the max level, then go for the guy in the middle and then complete it and then I'm over leveled for the rest of it and I'm good. And that wasn't the case at all because then they just keep bringing in waves and waves of these dolls and it almost felt like the final mission of another route. It really did. They were the, would, some of the largest maps, some of the most complex setups. Um, which I like. I, yeah. I gotta say, I, I, of all the negative things we've been saying about Cinder Shadows, I do feel like at least that aspect of it, I feel like 
this is good. This is what I would have wanted. Like, I like having it be difficult. Because then at least it's kind of like worth my time if I'm taking more time with it and struggling with it. Then it's like it doesn't feel like it's as short as it actually is, you know? That's my thing. I said, like, so I, I started streaming as well. I started Hard Classic. Yeah. And then after an hour, I was like, I finally finished the first mission. I'm yeah. like, I turned to my stream. I'm like, okay, listen. Like, And I started second mission. And when I saw what it was, like, okay. I don't want to spend hours just beating oh, each yeah. mission. Oh, yeah, the I'm, second mission is the one where there's yeah, like each, a raid, a raid, corner, a raid, a raid. Yeah, unlocks yeah, yeah, like yeah. three corners. Oh, and I was like, so, listen, I love this because <laughs> for me, it's figuring out a puzzle and stuff, and like I'll take my time to figure it. Sure. But I feel this is going to make for a boring stream. Sure. So, like, you want to see progress. So, like, I'm sure. going to turn back to normal classic and we'll make some progress. Sure. But, like, I was like, I'm a little disappointed that they, like, didn't say, come up with a new name or something, like, because they don't mm. use Lunatic anymore. Sure, they, they use don't. Maddening. Maddening, yeah. Um, and I was like, that would have been perfect. So, you have, like, Normal, hard, lunatic, maddening, and they sure. could have like said like, "Hey, we're gonna have uh, hard and lunatic would have been the difficulties or mm, something for like mm, this like DLC." Mm. And it wasn't so much I was upset with the, the the difficulty; it was that there was no indication it was gonna be this like mm. giant jump in mm. it. Nothing said beforehand or anything like that. So I was, I was taken back. I was sure. a little surprised by that. Sure. And but I mean, I'm fine with it now. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, my yeah, second playthrough, sure. I'm for like sure. already like on chapter five now, yeah. and it's like, yeah, it this is great. I love this. It's just. Give me a heads up next time yeah, so I don't look sure. so stupid. On for sure. I, I, I wonder if they did that because you have all the three lords in your command. So because you have Edelgard, Dimitri, and Claude, because they're already such strong members as it is, and you have Byleth with you. Maybe they and you have the, the sword of the creator already. It, yeah, so like, yeah. But like at the same time, the whole focus of this deal is saying I kind of like this to an extent. Uh, the finite resources. Right. You can't cheese stuff. You right. You can't like just like oh I'm gonna like buy everyone this stuff and then like upgrade it and stuff no. like no you only have this much gold especially on like on hard you have only like three thousand gold where yeah. normally start with ten thousand. Sure. Sure. And then yeah like the, the they talk about like you gotta like everything you can only repair you actually can't you can't forge silver weapons. No. Yeah. You can only yeah. forge the I was like oh yeah. my gosh. They, they really want you to do yeah. it. And you only have the characters you yeah. have. And it's like, okay. Which is where I started going, uh-oh. Like, when you had those unlimited dolls, I was thinking, what the heck is going to yeah. go on here? I'm going to waste all my resources. I'm going to lose. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, I was like... I don't want to keep burning through the sword of the creator and stuff and yeah. using like the skills that like like I want to have to keep using this to like beat everything. It's like, oh man, I, I see what they're going. And it, it felt the, it was the same feeling I had with maddening. It's like mm. I got to fail a lot in this mission and see where I need to do. And then mm. like maybe I need to back out. Like okay, I need to take a different character or I need to arm this with something here and stuff sure. like that. And like. That is the best experience for everyone, but I'm also a perfectionist. I play in classic. Sure. But like when I play in classic, if someone falls, it's not, oh, I'm going to continue without them. Yeah. I re, I, and like I also sometimes will refuse to use Divine Pulse. Oh, I'll use Divine yeah. Pulse for stupid mistakes. Uh, like, yeah, I'll, like yeah. oh, that was just dumb. I didn't mean to do that. But like sure. when I make like a, like a critical error, yeah. like this is like, I was like, it's okay, done. nope, I'm restarting the mission. Yeah. Like that's old school fire. Oh, see, that's me. crazy because to yeah. me, I'll do divine pulse, but I refuse to restart the mission. I won't do it. I refuse. I like. I won't do it. Like to me, like the idea of clicking reset. It's like I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not playing as intended. I gotta go. I got bless my way through it. And divine pulse was introduced, and I'm like, okay, this is a mechanic within the game they want us yeah. to use. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I'll use that as my restarts. But then if that happens, I waste through my divine pulses, and I have nothing left. It's over for me. I. Like, I need to start the whole thing over it, again. I mean, that's a perfectly great and valid yeah, experience. Yeah. I will use Divine Pulse when I'm, like, I'm progging a chapter, basically. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we're just trying to, to figure, like, out. Just, like, figure it sure, out. But like, sure. when it's my time, if I if I get to a completion and I've used Divine Pulse, like, let me restart and do this sure. in one shot, sure, basically. Sure, 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 sure. And, like, I like that challenge. Yeah, it's a fun challenge, And, absolutely. like, I'm also, I like seeing all the characters' endings and stuff sure, like that. Sure, I mean, there, it, I have played... Uh, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, where I've let people die mm. uh, early on when I got was new sure, to Fire Emblem, sure, yeah. and like I've gone through that experience, like oh man, this <laughs> sucks losing these people, and so I, I get it at yeah. least. But like yeah. now, like for whatever reason, I just drilled in my head that this is my definitive Fire Emblem series. Mm -hmm. But I love that they give me the choice to yeah, do that. Me too. Me too. For sure. Um, I have some questions from our patrons. Great. Uh, very specific questions, Let's actually. Hear it. All right, great. About the DLC. Our first one comes from Joseph. Uh, hey, Roger and panel. I really enjoyed my playthrough of Three Houses, but one common mission variable that I found really annoying and makes me hesitant to do another playthrough 
I found it was still present in the DLC. And at least based on watching Damiani stream one yeah. of the DLC missions, that variable is still there, and that is being numerous enemy reinforcements coming oh, yeah. onto the battlefield seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah. I've been playing Fire Emblem games since the US GBA releases, <laughs> and while enemy reinforcement has always been a factor, in three houses they seem to be extremely unfair, yeah. with multiple enemies showing up with little to no warning. Um, they go on like how they did in previous game stuff, yeah. and then basically, basically three. Uh, what do you? F- okay, so three houses does so many things right from a gameplay perspective. What do you feel like it does wrong, if anything? So do you agree with this? And there's like, anything else they? You I feel actually like- kind of agree with that. I feel like making it more difficult by having these like surprise reinforcements that aren't really things you can predict while you're going through the battlefield is definitely something that feels like a cheap shot. You know, it's like that second mission. I, I was yeah. sitting there streaming it, and like the first two, I'm like, I get this, I get this. But then by the last one, it wasn't even like fun. It wasn't that it was difficult even. It was just like, okay, well now I just gotta take more time up to do this extra thing. It didn't really feel like there was a reason for it to be longer than it was. I feel like, I feel that way about pretty much all of the ones that I've played of Cinder Shadow so far. Is that they all feel like they're sort of fudging the the length of the chapter with the reinforcement stuff. And there was a little bit of that in the main game, but it was mostly relegated to like the last two chapters of the main game. It wasn't really like the early chapters. The early chapters, it was, you know, going between the houses and you have like the mock battles and stuff. And so that like, you knew what was on the battlefield going in. And even with some of the, the beasts that like come in, those are mostly relegated to paralogues. They're not main mission oh, stories. Oh gosh, yeah, the paralogue the, one some of the those beast reinforcements, are, like the one with Marianne. Oh, the one with Marianne is the best one in the game. The one with is the best one in the game. I love it. Oh, uh, oh, about well, that. Well, she's just by herself in the corner, and you guys have to go up, and you have to. Oh my it was like, god! Like one right move at the beginning of Madden. Oh. But I so I understand this plight. Sure. And pa- so here's my thought on it. Uh, I'll try to express this the best way I can. I feel like in past Final Fantasy games, majority of reinforcements were. You, the only time you got severely punished is if you were just dumb and tried to rush a solo unit ahead way too oh, far. Oh, sure, sure, Like, you were just like, I'm going to rush to the sure. end. And, like, then you're surrounded by all these people and you're isolated. Well, that's what you get. Why would you rush sure. so far ahead? But in general, when reinforcements happened, you always had a chance to react or, like, you wouldn't get devastated on that turn. Sure, it was like, sure. oh, now they all get to go. And they're, like, as we said, a lot of the paralog missions at Three Houses were the most guilty of this. Sure. I feel like there are one too many times where you just, like, move one space too far with your group and all of a sudden you're surrounded or a giant wave of enemies and yeah. then it's also their turn as well potentially yeah. Yeah. and they just wipe you out it's like you just gotta now learn not to go that one square yeah. like that's the it's it, yeah it's the one square on your own turn exactly so I'm, then when they come in and you can't do anything on that next turn you kind of are forced to use the divine pulse at that point so. it's almost like I, I get their complaint like there should be like some contextual thing like hey stay under forest cover the moment right. you step out reinforcements will appear totally. or hey if you get too far from the group like some vo- like the yeah dialogue I mean, make it like a dialogue thing and yeah, even totally. if it wants to be a surprise, it's just like, totally. it, make it a surprise, but allow me to react with that situation. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's like, a oh, real war or real fight. Sure. It's not fair. They just surrounded sure. you. But I mean, but you're also speaking to somebody who is a massive Advance Wars fan. And Fog of War is such a huge yes. part of Advance yes. Wars. And I love Fog of War. It's great. I love but those. Fog of War, like you said, it's contextual. Yes. You know, if you leave this area, there's probably going to be a unit hiding there. So you got to plan around it. Whereas in this, it's like... It seems like it's open. It's open. It's totally open. You should I, be able to go there. I feel like in three houses and the uh, where it's used and in the DLC, it's a little. It becomes almost a gimmick. It's yes. relied on a little totally. bit too much, and they never change it up with yeah. what they do yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah. I do agree with you on uh, on this, Joseph. That I feel like it's a little bit. It's probably one of the worst implementations of it in yeah. the Fire Emblem series. Um, but I don't I don't think it's too terrible. Like even like yeah, in the first mission, it's like you know there's gonna be those claustrophobic oh, sure. things, you know. Sure, 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 when they sure, show sure. you they do do one thing. They show you whenever you see stairs, they're like Oh, Usually yeah. reinforcements are, gonna come, are coming yeah, down so the stairs. You put the person by the stair and block it, of yeah, course. Yeah, you put yeah. a tank or something yeah, yeah. right there to like, just take exactly, them and hold exactly. them there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, is there anything else general, though, like in Three Houses or something? that like No, I feel like for the most really of liked? I really just loved the gameplay in Three Houses yeah. for the most part. And I also feel like if you're worried about it or it's you're like, oh, I've been playing Fireman for a long time and this seems really difficult and it seems like kind of cheap, I don't want to try it. Like, I would still say try it. It's a, It's a worthwhile game. Yeah. I would say it's still one of the best in the series. Despite that, I really do like Three Houses. So it's it's literally this, it's this, and then like Path Radiance, Radiant Dawn, Radiant like Dawn. Right up there. Yeah. and like Awakenings, like just like in, like below them. Those yeah. are like my top up like, there three. Yeah, yeah. I always put. I'm, them I'm always I'm weird. I, like everyone always disagrees with me because I say Fates is like top three. I genuinely love Fates, but I also understand where they're coming from because for me, Fates is a experience where you play all three routes. 
Fates is the entire game. So if you play one of the Fates and you're like, this kind of stinks, I get it completely. Yeah, I had that game and I still have not touched it. <gasps> I, it's one I know I need to. I just oh keep forgetting. I, I'm not lying. I keep forgetting about it. Oh, I keep wow. forgetting that I have it and stuff. Wow. And I'm like, it's just sitting here, like the the collect whatever the version that came with all three. Sure. Yeah. And it's like it's just there in the box, like that big box. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, whoops, I kind of forgot to play this. Yeah. So yeah, I will get around to one it one day. day. One day. I, it I, is. I, it's worth streaming if you're going to stream oh, it. There's like some sh- funny. I think the thing about Fates is that. They know what they are in Fates. I think like Awakening, they were like, oh, we tried doing this support stuff. People seem to like this. Let's go hardcore into this. <laughs> they nice. Just, they just like really push it. With <laughs> I think that's what turned off a lot of hardcore Fire Emblem people who like really love the series is it's so much into like the waifu system and supports and stuff in Fates that I can understand how a lot of people would be turned off. But if like you like the dating sim aspect of it, you're going to love Fates. Okay. But uh, And then Three Houses, I think, toned it back in just the right way where now it's like this good mix and I don't really want it to go back to Fates. And I don't want it to go back to how it was before. I kind of like this, so. Yeah, I, 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 I'm always curious how my characters end up, and I want them always to develop their relationship. Sure. It's not so much like the matchmaking. I, I've known in the past, oh, I like the matchmaking and stuff. But like, what I really, truly non troll like about sure, it sure. is that I like characters who can build, as Huber would say, Michael Huber, uh, bonds between oh, each other. Yeah, that, yeah. Like they develop yeah. abilities. Like yeah. you keep them together in battle, they're more powerful. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. love that and stuff. And I like seeing like the friendships built around them. They don't have to become romantic or anything like that. Yeah. And even in Three Houses, like you get enough of that and stuff. Like it, it's pretty good and stuff. But like it doesn't always have to go romantic. There are certain yeah. characters I'm like, oh, you two should definitely you gotta, be together. Yeah, but, like, you have to be together. And yeah. in Three Houses, they don't completely. <laughs> They always reward you no, with that, but no. it does. If I had to pick or choose, it was fine. Sure, yeah, for sure, sure, sure. That's funny. <laughs> you had to clarify. You were like, oh, Michael Huber, because instead of being like Hubert, <laughs> he doesn't want to deal with anybody. It's not about the bonds. It's just about protecting Edelgard. That's it. That's no. There's no. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, our next question comes from uh, Christopher. Good day, allies. Through data mining, ooh, okay. Fire Emblem fans have discovered there are a total of six slots for different waves of DLC. Oh. For those counting at home, after Cinder Shadows, we are at the fourth wave of content. And Team Emblem has said in the past that all their post-release content will should be finished by April 30th, 2020. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but what could it mean? Just to keep people's expectations tempered, a wave of DLC for Three Houses has been as big as a side story like Cinder Shadows right. or as small as new costumes. Right. And if nothing else, these could just be placeholder slots that may never be used at all. Mm. There have been a uh, there has been a new character found in the recent file dump, but the data is wildly incomplete and is speculated to have been a scrapped character from Cinder Shadows. Okay. So I will ask you this now, panel. Is there any kind of update you would still want to happen for Three Houses in the future? Love and respect. Um, you know, I would have said prior to playing Cinder Shadows that I would want, like, a route that ties everything together, like a canon ending route. But the more I think about Three Houses, like, the more I think about, like, the the theme of the game and the idea and the characters, I kind of like the fact that this is kind of like the first real fragmented, there is no happy ending. Someone's going to die. In any One of the three routes, someone is going to die. Yeah. One of the main three. And... I appreciate that about it. I kind of, I, I would have said that initially I would have wanted that, like, where there's like some type of resolution where they come together and, yeah. you know, form one kingdom. And, I understand that. Um, but no, I don't really want that anymore, especially now after Cinder Shadows, because if, if it becomes what this is, where it feels like it's almost tacked on and it's not really like a good reason for them to be together, then I certainly don't want that to happen because then that takes away from all this other stuff we would have experienced with these characters. So yeah, I'm I'm I think I'm at a point where I'm good with yeah uh, me too with the, the with the I mean Three Houses was very long yeah I, I feel very rewarded me too I'm like I got my money's worth out of that game I'm good yeah. I I will say this though um, future content maybe in terms of a sequel we just literally just talked about like there is no unified ending between the three right I would hope that they make an, a sequel and it is like enough time passed. Mm. I hope it lets you use your save data to load the previous oh, route you completed Mass to make Fire that Emblem? your canon sure. ending in sure. your new game and you start sure. from that reality. <laughs> that would be really awesome. I love Edelgard, but I don't, but I don't want to live in the reality yeah. where Edelgard is emperor. <laughs> I don't think Nintendo will do this, but like, <laughs> if there's one thing I'd love to 
see them try, it would be like this, essentially. Sure, sure. Because, like, the closest I, they came was, like, carrying over your same data from Path of Radiance, treating on, and, and it was, like, very minuscule stuff yeah. that carried over. But though, that that is a direct sequel. Yeah. And I think there's no world in which they can make a direct sequel to this game without then, without a canon root, that if they were going to add that as DLC. Like, if you're going to do a sequel, we need to know who's dead and who's not. We need to know who took over at the ending. And I don't really know how they would do that. I mean, I mean, if you loaded based on your ending, if the game's premise started, it just assumes those characters are dead. Yeah, but that, I mean, that, but then that's programming three more routes, which is what three houses, which would be amazing. You get three more? I'm not saying. I, no, I'm assuming. You're I get where three you're going. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I would want that. You would have to get three more routes. Yeah, but. I, I, just, I don't see unless them doing they do it. it like, unless they do, if they wanted to like maybe not even use the save data, they'd have to do a giant ass time skip where mm. we're not really sure. Like we just know like three hundred like, years, four hundred. Like, we like know the there was a conflict. Awakening. We knew there was right. a conflict. Totally, totally. And like something happened after, and like now we're in this kingdom. Like the kingdom totally. maybe did unify, or yeah. something happened. Yeah. And that's this is where we're at now. And I would like that. Yeah. So if they were gonna do, okay, here's here's actually what I want. Okay. Because the more I think about it, I don't <laughs> want the three root thing. Okay. As a sequel. I would want three separate Fire Emblem games. It's getting kind of muddy with the timeline, but I don't really care. This isn't Zelda. Is three different Fire Emblem games that take place like hundreds of years later in each of the timelines. And you don't know until you're playing them. Oh. And they don't say it. But you're playing through and then you discover like, oh, wait, this was Edelgard's timeline. This was Dimitri's timeline. This was Claude's. That's pretty cool. As you're playing over the course of like the next 15 years or whatever, like the, each mainline Fire Emblem game is a branch off of one of their histories. That would actually oh. be sick. And then maybe somehow, like, at the end of all of them, like, Tiki brings everybody together with the world tree and then, it, like, loops the timeline and everybody's united. Like, that would be sick. That kind of thing would be really, really sick. As somebody who's, like, a hardcore nerd of, like, the story, that would be really cool. But um, I think it's more likely that if we're going to get a sequel, it's going to be like what you said, where you load your save data and then it's, like, three different routes. But I think it's more likely. I mean... I know they but then you'd also have to go back and play the old game three different times to get the three different they save might, data. They <laughs> might do a thing where you do a personality type quiz thing at the beginning. Oh, yeah, sure. If you don't have any like, save yeah. data, sure, sure, sure. But, I, I mean, the characters are popular, obviously. Oh, but yeah. like, I think I mean, Violet is in Smash Brothers. So. The most yeah. likely course action is this: make a, a new a new game that's yeah. not in this universe. I still, or, we talked about this before, too, is I feel like an Echoes is going to happen. I mean, them, so them making that a subseries. There's, yeah, there's games that have not come out here in officially in English exactly. that are great that exactly. should come out here. Exactly. And I think you there's know, also, like, Lynn's game, I think, is one, and Roy's game. Those two in particular. Lynn and Roy are such huge characters that I feel like those two in particular need yeah. to have. Like, Genealogy needs yeah. to come oh, out. Oh, ge yeah, right Genealogy. Is like, it's pro that should be the next one, honestly. Genealogy should be the next Echoes game. I hope it is. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Um, our last question comes from uh, from Chris. Hi, allies and Roger. Do Hello. You th <laughs> do you think the price tag for the DLC is too much? How much is it? So it's twenty four ninety nine. No. They say yes compared to Blood and Wine, it is too much. But so is most of DLC. I think with that comparison, mm -hmm. my argument is that it's not just a side story. It's the entire DLC from the last year, and as someone going through the campaign, it adds a new monastery area to explore, talk to, and adds new paralogs itself. But is twenty five dollars too much? Thanks, allies. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's too much. Um, but then, as soon as the words came out of my mouth, how much is the fighter pass in Smash Brothers? Uh, so the original one was uh, 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 nineteen ninety nine, and the new one is twenty four ninety nine. Maybe it's a little too much. <laughs> Because <laughs> if you think about all the stuff, went up by like five bucks. We're getting one fighter pass. Yeah. You get five characters. You get five stages. You get music for all of those. All the extra stuff that came with it. The spirits. Everything. The spirit battles. The boards. The classic modes. Like, yeah. I'm, comparatively, yeah. I think if I don't know, I'll, I'll say this, Roger. If I'm paying at least twenty five bucks for Fire Emblem Three House DLC, it needs to be as meaty as one of the routes. Mm. To and just so you don't price. think it's so I don't I don't think everything put together it justifies the price. Mm -hmm. Twenty dollar nineteen ninety nine. I think I could have lived a little bit more comfortably yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, I think fourteen ninety nine would have probably been like the sweet spot mm -hmm. for most people. Mm -hmm. I, I don't usually feel comfortable going into like pricing this because sure. I don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes now, and stuff. And the, like one thing I'm thinking about though is like. Um, you know how you could recruit Anne and you could recruit like Jaritza and all that stuff that they added since? Yeah. So is that expansion pass stuff or was that free update stuff? Because uh, if that's actually, expansion pass stuff, then I'm actually kind of like, oh, I feel pretty I okay with it if that's the case. The only free deal, I mean, the free update was the difficulty, right? right? And the expanded save slots. Right. And 
It's been a while, so I don't. Yeah, I know it's been a while. Part of it. Too, so. I, so I, uh, the new costumes. Because Jurita alone. I mean, yeah, it's like the it's new costumes, the new mo- uh, uh, monster area, and then like the side story mm. is like the ones I definitely remember. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. No. I mean, there's been other things. You, you, you break it down by uh, breaking it down by hours is not like always like the best thing. I mean, that's you're going strictly for value sure. aspect, but like what you the richness you get like mm. out of that content. Like a seven hour piece of content could be way better than a hundred hour piece of content. Sure. So like that seven hours sure. could be worth infinitely more to you sure. than that. So like that's that's the, always the the the, the contrast there for mm. people to just go strictly by this. There's this many hours and this mm. many updates, but like. I, that's why I think like twenty dollars for me is like yeah. like if uh, feeling the most comfortable saying that. But I mean, I, I think it also has a lot to speak to like how not satisfied it was with Cinder Shadows. Mm. Like if it knocked out of the park, I might be like, oh, Heck twenty four yeah. ninety nine, yeah. yeah, great. So yeah, what a deal! It speaks yeah. more to like the disappointment factor for me mm. in the story content than like the the whole package mm. itself. Yeah, because like twenty five, I'm pretty much okay with. Um, like I said, after thinking about it more, I'm like, oh, that does actually seem kind of steep now thinking about the Fighter Pass price. But that wasn't really something I even gave like a second thought to when playing this just because it's like Fire Emblem and because it's something I know I'm going to spend a lot of time playing and like replaying and having the characters in the roots. But again, I also haven't beaten it. So I think when I end up beating Cinder Shadows, I'll probably have a better outlook on that. I'm very, yeah, I'm I'll very, let you know. <laughs> yeah, very curious to know what you think. Uh, yeah. I also want to say like uh, uh, Ben Moore, who's also a big mm. fireball, that was on Discuss It yeah, last yeah, time with us, yeah, yeah. Uh, is out of town on assignment today. Um, really, really wanted to be a part of this. Yeah. I will, uh, obviously, I know he'll get a chance in the future to speak about this, but sure. to paraphrase, yes. he like is blown away in a good way about this. Like Whoa. absolutely loves the deal. The Cinder Shadow stuff, really? The Cinder Shadows. Wow, okay. He like, thinks it's fantastic. Oh. So at some point, uh, once you finish it, maybe we need to get all three get back to and be like, yeah. okay, like let's just have we're a done quick, like a spoiler talk, yeah, a quick yeah, yeah. spoiler talk about w- w- like I'm just curious because yeah. I, I I got a little insight into why he liked it and mm. he got a little insight into why I was disappointed mm. about it and it's like oh yeah it would be great to hear these opposing I'm interested. views yeah I want to I want to actually so I apologize you didn't it. get like that perspective from like <laughs> Ben but. Um, we're trying to find an avenue to make that happen in the near future. It's just, it's rough. I'm, yeah. I like Nintendo right now. There's just so much stuff going on. I feel like yeah. between the Fire Emblem DLC, Animal Crossing, and then Pokemon uh. Mystery Dungeons coming out, and then an, like the Pirate Warriors comes out for me. I, I don't yeah, know if it's a piece thing, but for me, I'm like, I can't wait for Pirate Wars 4. Um, and then, yeah, Xenoblade Definitive, and then probably E3. So, <sighs> Oh, you're, you're on board assuming Xenoblade's coming out in May from the leak. Oh, I like that's like a given. <laughs> Bro. Like, there's no way. You think they're going to release Xenoblade in uh, Holiday to Die? Zero percent chance. I mean, zero percent. I mean, was that... there a leak that said it was May? There was a store that listed it. Bro, I somewhere. think it could be April. I, mean, I really no, think it could be like during the direct, whenever why the next direct why, happens. Why they put it against the Pokemon DLC? That's massive. Pokemon DLC is in April. It's May, isn't it? No, are we going to give them flip flop? I think they're flip flopped, yeah. Well, whichever one, whichever month it's not going to be in is the month that should Oh, be. yeah, no, May. May. Yeah, yeah. So then you yeah, be yeah, right. yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and yeah, April yeah. was the original month. It would be actually the uh, roughly the original year anniversary. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was the theory. Yeah. I got it back. Because to me, I, to me, I, I, and we're getting off topic. I know this is it's Fire Emblem, but oh, whatever. It's like Fire Code. I'm sure people like this. Is to me, it's like Xenoblade is a great franchise. It's a franchise I love, but at the end of the day, it's still a niche franchise. And I think people need to remember that Monolith Soft is working on a new IP. They've been working on it for years, and they've been hyping it up for years and hiring for it. And I know that there's a big team at Monolith working on Breath of the Wild 2 because they, they worked on Breath of the Wild 1. They people. Right. That was a recent thing that just came out. They have 236 staff members at Monolith Soft. They're and massive. So even beyond Xenoblade and Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, yeah. Like, they're, they're working on that third main they thing. They have a third, yeah, right. at least a third. And so the, that, um, yeah. I think, is going to be a huge focus of E3. And so I think, like, one of the massive things that has to be in this first Nintendo Direct of the Year, whenever it happens, and I know people have been expecting it for months, is we got to get a definitive date for Xenoblade, and I'm almost positive it'll be, like, April, early May. I like. There's no way. There, I will. I will come back and eat crow. It's, it's on my. This thing. I'm. I'm guessing that. But like. People, yeah. Like I just want to give the usual warning. Sure. The last like almost sixty months a year, I've been preaching because yeah. I had to learn my lesson. Yeah. Uh, until something's confirmed, like stop assuming it's all. Oh sure, gonna of happen. course, of course. Like, but we're going with the like the direct. Yeah, we got of an course. Animal Crossing direct. Congratulations, you got a, a, some course. kind of direct in February. Of course. But where's that mainline direct that was sure. supposed to have happened by now? Like, well, I think everyone's assuming things. People, again. I think people are assuming because it's been such a drought 
But realistically, it really hasn't been. We had like the Smash one, we had the Animal Crossing one, we had the Pokemon one. We've had three different and we directs. Had Indies. And we had Nindies one. Right, so we had four. Or Indie World now, yeah, yeah. they call it. Indie World But Showcase. you had four of those that all could have been part of one. Pokemon yeah. always does their own thing, but like at least three of those could have been part of one. And they chose not to do that, which says to me there is something in this first one that is going to tease or announce what's coming later in the year with another big announcement at E3. I just, I mean, I, from my perspective, I could see Nintendo doing this real quick. Because you, you've already mentioned Pokemon Mystery yeah. uh, re, uh remake. It's a remake. Like remake. it visually looks way better. Yeah, than the it's original. cool. It's it's cool. I played it last oh, week. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, so yeah. They, got, they got they got that coming out early March. Yep. Right. Uh, end of March we got Animal Crossing. Yep. End of March, right? Yeah. yeah. Three March. Three March. March twentieth. Yeah. Uh, April. Suppose like it, let's say I, I assume the April Xenoblade, or May will be Xenoblade. Xenoblade. Or I'm assuming is going to be confirmed sure. either through like Twitter or something. Sure. I bet they just do a Twitter. Hey, really oh, state. April and then the Pokemon DLC in May. Sure. They're good till E3. They're I good. actually don't think I think anything they have to show is a big name stuff, mm. and I think they're saving that for E3. Like they can't do a direct because like uh, all we have to show is. Megaton stuff, yeah, and like we. But even to... even with like the megaton stuff, right? With like, I, this is a whole other discussion. But it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but we'll talk about it. It's fine. I'm sure people like this. You have to like label this something else. Now you got to be like direct yeah. talk and also final. <laughs> direct speculation. But, yeah, but the one big thing that stands out to me is, or two big things, are Metroid Prime Four and Breath of the Wild Two. Yeah. And going back to what you just said, people are assuming somehow, in some way, Breath of the Wild Two is going to be this year. And I'm like, there's no way, no way, no possible way that is a holiday game this year. There's no way. Bare minimum, it's like going to be March next year to coincide with fourth anniversary. And Metroid Prime 4 at the absolute earliest, at the earliest, is like late 2021. At the earliest. I cannot imagine it coming out earlier. There's no way. There's too much other big name stuff. And they're not going to... We don't have a, another mainline Mario announced for this year yet. We don't have... like. There's a lot of other big games that are just open in this gap. And we know there's not a mainline Pokemon game this year because they're doing the expansion pass. So if there's not a mainline Pokemon, there's not a mainline Mario, What what's it going to be? You I know mean... What I mean? So uh, everything you just said, I could see, uh, especially yeah. Metroid. I did agree, Metroid. Especially zero yeah. percent chance this year. Zero percent chance, and like this maybe year. in the next year, yeah. probably Zelda. I can see not making it this year, coming out like like March, cute, first half of next yeah, year. Yeah, totally, at some point. totally, totally. Uh, that, that's totally believable to me. Yeah. Also believable to me yeah. is that they have been working on a three D a three D Mario game or a new well, we got Odyssey two or something, or yeah, even yeah. just a new original one. But sure, we got uh, Odyssey two sure. would be like a perfect sure. thing with how well Odyssey sold and how little DLC they did for that game. Yeah. Considering yeah, that, what they've done for like Fire the, Emblem, that's the indication. Else. I was yeah, like, yeah. hmm, about yeah. that, yeah. 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 Uh, so if you could get like a th new 3D Mario, and like that came out before Breath of the Wild, so like maybe they've been that's further along. There's, hey, we want to keep some secrets from you yeah. all. Um, so you can have that coming out this year. Roll with me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that Metroid Prime HD trilogy that everyone's so sure is done I'm, and like ready to go. I'm not so sure. I mean, I want it, but yeah. I don't think I'm not. I mean, if it's yeah. real and stuff, it could have like you'd want, you'd assume that would come out before Metroid Prime oh, 4 to sure. reacquaint everybody for with sure. that series. For sure. I could see that if it's real, totally being next year sure, too. Like sure. first half of the year, Metroid, second half of the year, the actual sequel yeah. to everything. Or sorry, the collection. Yeah. See, well with Metroid though, I feel like to and this is just a weird, but it's going off of like what happened with Samus Returns. The E3 we got Samus Returns announced was the E3 they announced Metroid Prime 4. And they were like, hey, we're making Samus Returns because we know it's gonna be a long way for Metroid. Yeah. And I could almost Definitely see them go. Okay, you know Mercury Steam. We're not Mercury Steam. Are they the ones that worked on it? Yeah, Mercury Steam. They are. Okay. Yeah, They're like, the hey, Lord uh, Shadow. yeah. They made uh, you know Samus Returns. They did a great job. We're gonna make them do a new 2D Metroid in the meantime because guess what? Metroid Prime Four is not gonna be for a while. That, one of, that was one of the two rumored games. The new That's 2D one that Metroid people are. I'm Paper not Paper Mario. Don't even put that but in the see, ether. They, they don't even put see, that in the ether. Again, I have been waiting for a good Paper Mario game. People assuming for years. It's supposed to be like I return to form. Whatever. The rumor a Paper Mario, new Paper Mario, or a remake of OG. Paper I've Mario. heard both, okay. but I cannot, I cannot do this to myself, bro. I love the original Paper Mario. It's like a 10 out of 10, top 15 favorite game of all time. I love it. Thousand Year Door, like easy 9.5 out of 10, probably a 10 out of 10. Great game. Then Super Paper Mario came out, and it's fine. There, there's issues with it. I understand why some people like it. I don't personally like it. That's fine. Then we got Sticker Star, and I'm like, bro, this isn't looking good. <laughs> then we got Paper Jam. I'm like, this is just a Mario and Luigi game. <laughs> and then we got Color Splash, which, like, kind of a step in the right direction. Really great graphics, great music, but, like, gameplay's kind of trash. Yeah. So then it's like, well, what are you going to get to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> I Like, I, I've been hyping myself too much up for these other Paper Mario games that I cannot, as a, such a huge fan of the original game, I cannot believe any rumor that states there's a return to form Paper Mario. Because I was at the E3 
where they had 3DS demos of the Paper Mario running on it, like the little video with the Chain Chomp buddy. And I'm like, oh, we're gonna get partners in the 3DS one. What do we get? Stickers, bro. Yeah. I cannot, I refuse to do this to myself. I can't do it. Okay, I'll, I won't go there. I can't, but I, but I don't think you're wrong in saying that there could be a Paper Mario announced. But I refuse to believe it's a return to form good Paper Mario. Gotcha. To me, that series died a long time ago. And that it's gonna take some like massive thing for that series to come back for me. So. Gotcha. But <laughs> we got heated with Paper I, Mario. I, I, I wanna, uh, no, that's great. I love hearing that. Uh, I, I, there's, basically, there's a lot of games that we might not even know about that sure. they could have. Pikmin. And yeah, like, we just, like it'd be Beta 3. We know about that. We just sure, haven't we seen it in a while. Beta, yeah. I mean, it, 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 we've Bradley heard. Default 2. Yeah, the Bradley Default 2, we already know about. We've heard rumors that like there is a new Monster Hunter for Switch that's yep. not World. Yep. Because they obviously, it's, because the last one sold well on yeah. Switch as well. So it's yeah. like. You know that's gonna be a hit when it comes out. Like, sure. there's so many games that like are in the works for Switch that will be big deals. That and they, but they always have little things. So like that's why I always say there could technically be a direct before E3. Yeah. Because there are probably a lot of small games we don't know about. Yeah. That they could do. But at the same time, I would not be shocked if there is just they bucked the trend. There is no proper direct in the first half. They wait till <laughs> oh, E3 oh, because who knows? Maybe they're big surprise. Heck. We they said there's no new Switch model this year. Yeah. They didn't say they can talk about one this See, year. <laughs> I think I, this is they've lied a lot about. I know this, they with like lied. DSI I know, or whatever. I know, but they, this is one year I I believe them I think, because I think they don't want to compete with the new systems that are coming out. They don't. And, and, they, I, and they said it in the – it wasn't the QA session. It yeah. was actually part of their official presentation to investors, mm. and that would actually be illegal. Oh, if so so, if someone then. called them on yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like – It was a new model. Like they, it wasn't like, yeah. like they lied to a newspaper or something. Sure. This was like – they, they of like, like yeah, yeah. Inve- You're misleading investors. Yeah, so I know, like you can't to me, I mean, if you look at the timeline then, what yeah. makes sense is when does that quarter end? It's in March of next year. What came out in March, the Switch did. Breath so, of the Wild did. I mean, you could launch a Switch Pro alongside Breath of the Wild I know. That's Breath the dream. Too. That's what I keep hearing. Everyone I mean, yeah. will see, like, that Breath of the Wild 2 running on yeah. slightly better hardware, That's just, it. like, running nicely and That's stuff. It. Yeah, the dream. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think any of that is in whatever this early Direct is. I mean, I, I just don't think it's the case. I think this early Direct is a lot of what we talked about, like Paper Mario, maybe 2D Metroid, whatever, like some ports probably, maybe Bayonetta 3 teaser or, like, something. But I think whatever their big, like, Megaton is, they, that might not even be in this. They could announce that at E3 and then be like, oh, it's a – Mario Odyssey 2 or like Mario Kart Adventure or something. Yeah, you know, people see whatever. Like, I saw rumors about like a new Mario Kart. Sure. Is it going to be the pe- their real big holiday title? Title. It's not Breath of the sure. Wild 2. Sure. I mean, there, there's so much out there, Could but be like, you know, I'm just excited. Like, it, it's, Me been, too. it's been a, it's been a while since yeah. hearing big new news. So yeah. like. It's only going to make it for me that much more exciting. Yeah, I mean, it can make it a bigger letdown if it's a bunch of nothing. <laughs> sure. But you know, if there is that big surprise, sure. it can be oh, so much the sweeter. Well, I, I think the one other big thing too with the direct, what if we get one even sooner rather than later? I think because of the reaction to Byleth online, which was so like visceral, and there were so many people who I think because they saw oh these are all new franchises, and then you end with like. Which, I mean, I, I like Three Houses. I like Byleth. Yeah. I was happy with that reaction. But I even said in my reaction, as I'm, like, so happy about this, I'm like, I feel so bad for people who wanted Dante. Because the, the stars were aligning, and it just wasn't going to happen. I could see them doing in this first direct, because obviously the character's not going to come out anytime soon, but them at least teasing, almost like the Joker thing, to be like, hey, but this is the first character of Fighter Pass 2. And then they drop the character at E3 and then announce the second character then to come out at the yeah. very end of the year. And I, I think timeline-wise that works out. If we're getting like two more each year, um, we could get one at E3 that gets revealed beforehand and the one that gets revealed at E3 that comes out at the end of the year. And then they just keep going through that trend of doing, you know, well, actually, it's six and before twenty twenty one, right? You, you, if you're gonna split them evenly, be three this year, three next year. So three this year. Wow, because like, there's six. December thirty first, twenty twenty one is the deadline they gave themselves. Get three more Smash characters this year. That seems. Spo- like, I mean, it doesn't mean three this year, I know, but like, but it's you likely expect if they're gonna split it. that. Man, I really hope they go all out and troll everyone. I hope it's Dante for the first one. Oh, yeah. But I hope they just redo the Fire Emblem intro. Oh, my God. And, like, they do another... So you And they, like, they just, like... It's, like, like someone, like, complaining to, like, Sothis or something, and it's, like... What is, like we get it? You oh. don't want any more sword users. And then Dante walks through. He goes, "No, they said no more sword users." And he walks away. And stuff. I could. You literally saying that uh, reminded me of something. 
Oh. Travis Touchdown is known for playing video games. Yeah. They could easily do that scene of three houses. Yeah. Him playing it yeah. and being like, no more sword users, whatever, <laughs> throws the controller away and then grabs his laser sword out. And there is a No More Heroes coming out. They, so. they, they should, do, like, if they want to knock it apart, do a double reveal. Do exactly what you just said. It, 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 no, it, it's, it's Travis doing that, but then he goes, man, I'm so famished. And he calls for a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that. I mean, I'm down. I'm down. Uh, I'm down for it. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. Do a two in one. And that's going to be so hard to do, getting two companies to agree to like, yeah. collaborate. Well, I mean, at this point, I still, I, I don't, this is like very unpopular. I think Master Chief is coming. I do. I really think, nice. especially after Cuphead, I'm like, I think this is, this is what they're going to do. I think Microsoft wants to make a statement. Like, all of our games, right, you could play them whichever way you want to play them. And I would not be surprised if, like, E3, we get a Master Chief collection announcement, okay. like, of the original games on Switch, and then they throw Master Chief in Smash. Because to me, Master Chief's whole thing was, like, finishing the fight. Bro, that seems like it screams Fighter Pass 6. That seems like that's the way to end it. If you're I mean, really going to end it, and he comes out, and he finishes the fight, and he literally is the be, last character. It would be such a huge deal. It would make waves. It would be one of, like, it's right up there. I mean, we heard Sora. the stuff with Sora already, yeah, But it's, like, Sora like, and Master Chief are the only yeah. two that I could think but of that would do that. there is one other. It's most unlikely because no one's really like like heard an inkling of this, but uh, this comes from Michael Huber. Okay. Because he was telling me like you know rem reminding me that Smash is this like celebration of gaming, a soccer. Oh right? sure, sure, sure. And like if you if you put Master Chief in there, you have all this representation. There's something that hasn't been represented as a part it's of Sony. gaming. So Sony. <clears throat> And he's like, yo, put that Kratos in there. Kratos would be sick, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think it would be yeah. more likely if we're going to do that, that would be Crash. Well, that would have to be, you have to get yeah. Activision right. to go in But, it, but I yeah. think the, like, Crash being in it, I think, would symbolize more of Sony yeah. than being Activision. Like, yeah, it would be going through Activision, but I think if they were going to do that, that would be Crash. Sony, but, Sony, 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 Sony have said, like, they love Smash and stuff. Oh, so it's I mean, I'd be hyped for that. I'd be super hyped for that. You want to put Kratos I in mean, Smash, whatever. Uh, 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 Corey over there, while guys, uh, yeah. was tweeting about freaking Golden Sun, like oh, wanting them to bring. He said, "I would trade all the the meme about what big franchises would you trade for a yeah, smaller yeah. one." Yeah, he was like, "Give away all the big Nintendo franchises for, for a new Sun. Golden Sun." I was like, <laughs> "There you go, perfect." That's the direct announcement. It's going to be Golden Sun. Isaac there you is go. back. Brand new Golden Sun. Yeah. I think that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted <laughs> a question for this episode of Friend Code. Uh, if you'd like to submit a question for consideration for an episode of Friend Code, you need to be part of our $5 and up patron tier. Uh, that's also our early access tier where you get episodes of many of our shows, uh, including our podcast early uh, this week. Uh, as I made in the patron post, I apologize. We're recording this later in the week, so it did miss its early access window. But hey, you're getting a really awesome discussion and a special guest here. So go. hopefully you accept my <laughs> humble apology for no early access this week. Um, but thank you everyone for your questions. Also, we got some, we have shout outs that we do. Okay. We have a shout out tier. Okay. Um, I'm going to say the names, but how okay. we do it at the end is I'm going to say shout out and halfway okay. through it, you say shout out like in cadence basically. Okay. Just okay. once. Okay. So for this, for the month of February, 2020, our shout outs are to, oh, I'm going to say the names. I was going to be I'm like, shout out. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, I'll give you. Uh, got sorry. it. Okay. I messed that up. So shout outs for February, 2020, El Thanis, Greg, the Dark Knight Kettering, Caleb Togi Crawford, Will Schmuck, and Mr. One Luigi. Shout out! Shout out! Shout out! out. Shout out. <laughs> so we do it. So we have a meme. Uh, this is not Roger's fault at all. So we don't actually say shout don't out. Troll me. We say shout down. Like shout down. Shout down. Okay, we'll do that again. Do it, read the shout outs again. We'll do it again. All right, one more time. One more time. Let's do this again. El Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering. Caleb Togi Crawford, Will Schmuck, and Mr. One Luigi. Shout out! out. There, there you go. go. <laughs> See that even did it. <laughs> we get the there you go at the same time. That's the take right there. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me You're this so late on welcome. a Thursday evening to talk about <laughs> Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, and direct speculation. Yeah, Bonus third topic. Boom, for boom, you. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have anything coming up or anything like that uh, you want to let people know I about? Anything coming up? I mean, I've got a Pirate Warriors playthrough coming up on my main channel. I've got Animal Crossing stuff coming up, streams, and also videos when the game comes out. I'm going to stream Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX as well. Nice. I've never played a Mystery Dungeon game, and then I was okay. invited last week to go to a preview with Nintendo, and I'm like, this is actually really fun. So I'm going to check this out um and then of course like lots of anime and manga stuff coming out spring seasons right around the corner so uh, i'm excited very soon yeah yeah 
Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, everyone else, for watching. And until next time, may the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Bye-bye. <laughs>